We will call the March 14th, 2024 meeting to in order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Anne, would you lead us? I'm sorry. Anne. Anne, would you lead oh, us? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I spoke into the microphone, Ann. <laughs> you always yell at me to speak into the microphone, and I did. <laughs> Kathy. Uh, you can do uh, public comment. Oh, I guess we can. Yeah. Is anybody in the office, no, in the audience, who would like to have public comment today? You have five minutes. Please state your name, your address, and come on up. And online. Well, thank you very much there. Anybody online? I do not see any hands raised. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. Um, just to go through the process for tonight, oh, we're going to start off with um, the registrar of voters, then the library is going to come and give a brief presentation, and then Rose Ponte Economic Development. So we're going to have those three presentations first, then we'll start with my departments and we'll run down all through the departments. Um, we are taking a break around 6 o'clock for pizza is coming um, when we get to the part where we're going to do my departments we typically do it by section and we do a tentative approval and if you want to um, go back to any of the pages after you'll ask questions if you want to go back to any of the pages if you want to make changes or anything like that we'll keep a running list of that and at the end we can go back and address any of the pages but we'll be uh, tentatively approving uh, each one of the sections and that's how we typically do it okay so that's that and once Anne comes back, She's the registrars, back. and you're going to start, everyone has their book, right? And you're going to start on page nine. And um, and I, I think when you and I talked, you, you don't, Joe, do they do the tentative approval before? Do they make a motion? Most make the motion. And so we're going to start on page nine. Okay. <clears throat> but first, yes, it's do D. So. No, that's what I thought, too. At the end. So make it after Yeah. So. Yeah. If everyone goes to page nine, this is the registrar's um, thing. At the end, you'll say, make a motion to tentatively approve page nine. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Well, you can go ahead uh, and. First, I'd like to make a motion to consider and take action on the proposed fiscal year 2024 2025 budget. Second. We have a motion and a second. Hello, Ann and Beth. How are you today? Very well, thank you for coming down, or actually walking over, not really coming yes, down. Yes, long commute for us. Was it far? Traffic issues. <laughs> <laughs> been together all day, and now we get to be here in front of you, so thank you. Um, so I think you all know us. I'm Beth Kittner, the Democratic Registrar of Voters. Ann Newberry, Republican Registrar of Voters. So we're just a few months into our second year of our new term. So we've had um, lots of learning since January 2023. It's a challenging job. It's a busy job. Um, but we're working really well together. And we have great deputies, great poll workers. Um, so we're in good shape. Um, because as you know, there's more changes to come in our office, as we were here talking about last month. Um, but the budget increase that you see from 23 to 24 to 24, 25, um, is happening for a few reasons, but it is a big year for elections, right? With the um, presidential election happening in November, that's a high turnout election that we have to ramp up for in staff. And any time it's a bigger election, there's just more preparation, uh, more hours that go into that and setting that up. Um, but those a possible primary in August for state or congressional offices, we have yet to see whether or not we'll be running another election in August. Um, and then we obviously have the referendum every late April, early May. So we have three voting events in the 24-25 year that we know of, that we're planning for. Um, and then as we were here talking about in February, we have early voting that we're implementing for the first time this year, mm -hmm. starting in just a few weeks on March 26th. So we've been very busy planning for that, um, scheduling, that sort of thing. So early voting for 24-25 could be um, seven days in August, which is equivalent to about 71 hours of staffing, and then um, 14 days in November for the presidential election, which is about 134 hours for staffing. 
So that alone, that's that big bump that you see in our request. Um, but each voting event requires you know, preparation in the office, recruitment of poll workers, which is what's been happening in our office. So if you've been in our office the past couple of days, it's lots of phone calls, leaving messages, poll workers calling back, plugging them into different polling locations. And, um, and we're working on early voting and the primary on April 2nd together and getting that ready. Um, so recruitment, scheduling, and then we have to train every poll worker mm -hmm. for every voting event. Um, so I think, you know, Ann and I shared when we first started kind of what we heard from the folks who recruited us to um, take on this job and um, our predecessors too. And it was described as, you know, public hours are 15 hours a week. <laughs> so you're typically here 15 hours a week. Um, but it's very busy and obviously a lot more hours leading up to an election. So, you know, the week or two leading up to an election. But what we're finding is most weeks, I'm so sorry, most weeks, at least 25 hours for us to just keep up and on a regular week with registrations and it's people coming on and off the rolls. Um, what else do I want to say? Or am I getting into what you, you are going to say? Okay, um, so just a regular week and just maintaining the voter rolls and that sort of thing. It's, it's at least 25 hours a week. That, that's without preparing for an election or leading up to an election. Um, when we look at the early voting and how that will change things, it looks like, depending on the year and how many voting events there are, it could increase our hours about 20%. So just to, to put that out there. Um, and there's the job itself over the years, over the past decade, 20 years, has just changed a lot. So that's that's your segue. <laughs> I've got my script, see. <laughs> and she's talking. So she can keep talking if she wants. Do that to she, me at Rotary the other She day. wants in. <laughs> oh, yeah. But historically, th you just need to know that things have really changed for all registrars across the state, not just in Farmington, mm -hmm. the past 10 and certainly 20 years. In Farmington alone, active registered voters has increased by 38% in the past 20 years. In 2003, there were 14,636 voters, and now we're just under 20,000. The increased transactions, of course, are as sort of as Beth alluded to, everyone's more transient these days. Um, you should know when we, um, change somebody's registration, even in town. They get a new registration card and it's stapled to the old. And some of them are five, six, seven, eight cards now. Some of it for addresses and some of it for party changes. They go back and forth. Um, so technology has had a big impact because every time you go to DMV, you have a way to make a change in your voting we then get that notice. And then we make the change, send them a letter, and so forth. So I'm sure our postage has gone way up too. We have monthly meetings with the Secretary of State now that are required. We have twice year conferences, which is sort of like professional development. And we have required certification classes that we need to go to. Uh, the budget request increases is primarily for staffing of early voting and all the other voting events for 24-25, as Beth alluded to. But it doesn't include any possible increase for the registrar's salaries. And that will get voted on by the council, I believe, before our new term be begins in January 2025, because we have a two-year term. We'll be recommending an increase in our salaries to reflect the increased responsibilities as well as the hours and the demands of our job. Um, the incremental increases that were given to our predecessors who had the roles for many, many years just have not been keeping up with the changes in the position and the hours that are required to do the job the way we know it should be done for the town of Farmington. We want the best for Farmington at all times. Take any questions? Sure, well, thank you both. There's we no doubt it's a hard job, so again, thank you for everything. 
coordinating, training, getting everything done. Dave, you have any questions? Um, well, I just want to compliment Bethany. And you, you have, it seems like you have a great working relationship and you're, you're great in the office. Every time I pop in, you're, you're, just, it's, you're just helpful and friendly. And I know things are hectic, but you know, kudos to both of you. Um, so on this, it looks like, right, um, your proposed uh, request for, for, for the part-time personnel services were to be like 164, 325, right? And the, and the town manager, where we've landed here is 136, 257. Do you see those numbers? Yes, yes, you're just looking at the part-time, which is basically our personnel or salary costs, yep. Right, and I guess from that end, well, and it's the biggest line item, um, what I'm wondering is, so, the state of Connecticut came up with 10-5. They came up with their contribution. Oh, for, that's for just early for early voting. Voting, mm -hmm. right? Right. Which, if you took the actual 2022 and 2023 and you added 10-5, you'd land on 136 plus or minus, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you comfortable that that number will cover what you have in front of you? Or? Well, 10-5 won't. 10-5 won't well, yeah, begin to. Right. No, yeah. we made a presentation earlier. Right, that's what I thought. Okay. To council okay. with Derek Slap and, right. and Mike offset, D'Amico and everyone here. Right. It'll yeah. offset it. No. Okay. And yet it's required. So how many how many people at each polling place is required? It's required, for example, for the primary that we report by each district and precinct. So we have seven voting locations for this primary coming up. Now, I know that we're not talking future with that, but that's sure. that's a huge that's coming up, right. waste okay. of money. <laughs> okay, you've answered my question, my inquiry. Yep. Amy. Thank you for all that you do. You guys do a great job, and I, I appreciate the fact that you're good about what's all these things that are happening, and just wanted to thank you for that. Welcome, Keith. Keith. I echo everybody's thanks, and um, I do think it will be incumbent upon us to support the registrars who are definitely being asked to do more. You know, everybody I think who was up here uh, was sold a job that was easy, <laughs> and then you find out that you have a bunch, you know, but, but certainly um, that you guys are definitely in that boat too, and you know, thank you very much, and I think it'll be incumbent upon us to support you as we go forward mm -hmm. into these new waters. We just wanted to indicate that you know, maybe bad on us, but we didn't necessarily put in our own increase when we did our request. Right. And there's some other clerical support, and no, certainly we'll have to figure yeah. out how to what we really need to, um, and just learning the job too. Or, no, and thank you for. Uh, I mean, I think everybody owes you a debt for the fact that you are doing the job that is required and not sticking firm to you know the hard parameters of hours and whatever else. And you're just handling. Actually, we're kind of the same that way, so that's good. So we don't yeah. have someone who's doing. We enjoy the job. Excellent, Sarah. I don't have any questions. Well, actually, I do have a, just a curiosity. Where where will the early voting be? Yeah, so full. It's going to be in the pavilion. In the pavilion. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. For all early voting events. We are so fortunate to have the pavilion, because we were going to try and do it here in the council chambers, but that really disrupts town hall. Mm -hmm. Probate and everything else. Council. <laughs> well, booking the room, the traffic, mm -hmm. the foot traffic. It yeah. definitely so, makes it easier in and out over there. We have the pavilion. We are, I'm about to give you a handout that lists again the early voting hours, and we hope to see you at early voting the last week of March so you can talk about where it is and how it's operating. Try it out. Perfect. Right. Patty, do you have Second a Second question. Did um, you? No, that was it. No, I'm okay. just thank you both. Patty, you have anything? Um, I, I just have a question about, so the actual expenses that we have in our budget book are from 22-23, which was a state election year. Right. How do those numbers compare to a presidential election year? Uh, like prior to early voting. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, right. I mean, are they wild comparable? No, I think... Um, I think a presidential year was closer to one, 
150, 140, but I'd have to look. I don't have going back further. I mean, I do in the appendix. It bumps it up a little bit because we have to be really careful when we have high traffic moving, you know, making sure we have staffing that can accommodate, move the lines, keep the lines short. So you do see a little bit of an increase. Mm -hmm. Presidential is obviously the largest turnout mm -hmm. that we have. Usually. Uh, who knows this year? So I'm just curious, given that this year's recommended propo proposed budget is 136,000, if that's enough for a presidential election year. Oh, but down at the bottom. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the part time line, aren't I? My bad. <laughs> Reading the wrong line. Um, you can scratch that last question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Brian. All I can say is, echoing everyone else here, you, your staff, your volunteers are all champions. Thank you for keeping democracy alive and voting alive and for all that you guys do to make us what we are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Motion for tentative approval. Yep. Yes. So, <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion for a tentative approval for uh, page nine in our budget book. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And for Dave and Brian, you didn't hear it. We do, we do a TAs for these. We could always go back later and revisit them if there's anything that does pop up. Perfect. Yep. All right. Thank Next you very time. much. Thank you. Thank you both very, very much. Yep, thank you. Did you hear me well, Ann? <laughs> Thanks, Ann. No, she gave me a, she, she always had a problem with me. That's all right. <laughs> Never loud enough. Thank you. Thanks again. <laughs> Sir. Thank you. Of the registrars. One more. <clears throat> Hello, Rose. Hello, Joey. How are you? I'm well. How about you guys? Good. What page are you on? Oh, I'm on page. Oh. <laughs> I can get her going. This guy had two cookies before. He's got that sugar in his veins. Yeah, wait a couple of seconds. Wait. <laughs> get my glasses on. Uh, pages 14 and 15, please. All right. So everyone knows Rose Ponte, our economic development director. Mm -hmm. And so Rose, why don't you uh, get started? Okay, great. Um, nice to see everybody tonight. And as many of you uh, know from the past that all of my budget requests are tied to the goals that have been part of, uh, that, that come from you guys through the, your strategic plan. And my budget, I, I like to keep it flat because I think it, it's very important to have a low mill rate. <laughs> That's the one tool in my toolbox that I have to attract. So um, instead of going through a flat budget, I like to usually take this time to give you guys a little glimpse of what's been happening in uh, town in terms of economic development. We always like to say that Farmington is the number one economic leader in the Hartford region. And you can't really say that, I don't think, without having data to prove it. And so I thought I'd share some of that data. According to our 2023 town profiles, uh, our current residential population has 26,559 residents and uh, 3,337 active businesses, which are employing 32,554 people. So we actually have more people coming to Farmington every day to work than we actually do residents, which really shows the vibrancy of our business community. Um, as of 2000, uh, as of just this last month, according to Ravis, the, the median residential sale price for a home was $456,250. I've been kind of doing this now for a number of years, and I myself am pretty surprised how these residential prices continue to rise um, pretty steadily year over year. Uh, the medium household income is 106773 and just for a comparison, uh, the state's medium income is 83572 our current unemployment is 3.8, while the state's is 5.0. That was as of January 2024. 
Um, and of the 29 uh, towns and cities in the Metro Hartford region, we, we have the lowest mill rate at 24.21. Um, the other town closest to us would be Windsor Locks there at 26.33 and Heartland, which is 27.25. And this low mill rate is not only attracting people to want to come and live here, but really it's a big attraction um, for businesses to relocate here. Um, our, our business base contributes 30% of the taxes collected, which really helps taking that load off of the residential community as much as possible. And when we look at the strength, really, of Farmington's business community, it has to do with how diverse we are. So we have office, we have um, a total of 4.6 million square feet of office space. And while office space nationally is really you know, struggling and having problems because of the new remote work uh, formula, we're looking in Farmington still at a higher than usual vacancy rate. So we have, we're at 11% vacancy rate right now, which is a little bit higher than we usually have. But compared to how some of the other towns and cities are struggling, we're holding our own. And part of that has been that our office building owners have invested use this time during COVID to really reinvest in their buildings, offering lots of amenities. That has been very successful to those office buildings. And then the other thing that's been done is really redevelopment of these office buildings. So uh, underutilized office space, what could it be used for? And a great example of that is recently at 1690 New Britain Avenue. It, it was over almost 100,000 square feet of underutilized office space. And Mott Corporation came in, were, were successful in getting a zone change to industrial. So they were able to redevelop 65,000 square feet into very high advanced manufacturing use and hiring 100 new employees. And they're gonna be using that facility to help grow their green energy business. So that's just an example of some of the different strategies we're trying to help our businesses do so that vacancy rate doesn't hurt them. So I still say that improving their office space and, and looking at ways to use underutilized is, is, is really a part of our success. It's really the talented workforce, the low taxes, a safe community. That's always the driver that's bringing more businesses, always interested to come to Farmington. Currently, um, we have three residential projects that are under construction. The Pondview Apartments uh, by farming, uh, Fairfield based Scala Bra Partners. They just finished putting down their foundation, and that's going to be a really beautiful market rate apartment. Marriott Op House is almost completely leased. And by the time they're finished, they'll have a new restaurant and also indoor pickleball courts that uh, people from outside the community can become members of. Sager Development has a new 62-unit mixed-income community on South Road, and uh, that's under construction as we speak. And the other projects that have been approved have still not, have not started construction yet. So I'll, I'll be giving those details throughout the year to all of you. Our industrial space, we have 2.1 million square feet of industrial space, zero vacancy. It's almost, you know, it's really a tribute to how well our manufacturers are doing. Over the past year, we've had many manufacturers add on to their campuses, and the recent one you might have re uh, read today in the Hartford Business Journal is EBM PAPS, and they're gonna be adding 14,671,000 square feet. So that sector of our economy really is doing well. Um, and then I always like to look at our small businesses, the backbone, I always say, of the business community. They create more jobs. They, they, they spend the money, and it goes right back into the community. And this past year, even though it's been a little bit of a difficult year with financing and, and different market challenges, we still welcome Bollywood Dreams, Bruno's Cafe, The Daily Grind, Capture the Concept, Base Camp, Refresh Food and Drink, Liquid Nirvana, Sugo Tartoria, and Expanded New Claudia's, Focus Health Partners, and a newly re uh, relocated Green Tails Market. 
So just to give you a little flavoring of that, um, because I think it's very important to grow, to really grow that entrepreneurial ecosystem. I'm partnering with the Farmington Libraries. It's going to be a great little series, which is going to be called The Entrepreneurial Journey. And the first panel will take place April 23rd. And the panel will consist of all new businesses and we're calling it opening their doors. They had a dream, how did they get to open their doors? And then on May 14th, we'll follow it up with more seasoned local business pan, uh, owners, and they're gonna be calling how they're keeping those doors open. And so we're, we're really hoping that that library starts to become um, uh, helping with us um, with the economic development department and continuing to grow those connections in town. And that's, that's all my news. That's it. That's it. <laughs> we didn't talk about bioscience. Oh, well, nothing to report there yet, so I didn't want to talk about it. Well, But I could talk about bio if you'd like. Obviously, Rose, I tell you time and time again, you are an asset to our town. It's, Thank you. It's very um, complimenting when you hear this from other people from out of town, other town managers or first selectmen, and how known you are throughout Connecticut. And then obviously when we made state people that you are just so in touch with everything from manufacturing to our bio so i can't appreciate or say more of you do a great job a lot to me it's awesome so we'll open up questions with brian sure oh, thank you joe uh, i want to say thank you obviously for everything that you do for our business development but also for the outreach and engagement you do for businesses through the newsletters and keeping people informed as to what's available but also to you know the entire town to our residents through the engagement newsletter that goes out. Is that weekly? Uh, so we do it every other week. Every so other there's week. two community newsletters every month. And then there is, um, I do a quarterly business newsletter, um, really geared towards businesses. What, what are the business events and things of that nature? You know, more business focused. It doesn't grow if they don't know about it. So thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Patty. I don't have any questions just to say, Again, Rose, you do a great job, um, and I really appreciate everything you do. So thanks. Thanks so much. Sarah. I don't have any questions either. I'll just echo the thing. Like, thank that you. was a great presentation. Oh, thank you. Keith? All that and a flat budget. What are we, <laughs> Amy. What are we about? <laughs> thank you, Rose. Great job. Thank you. Amy? I echo everything everybody else said. Thank, thank you, you for your much. efforts. And Dave? Rose, there's nothing more to say. Everybody said it. <laughs> we totally appreciate your your efforts on behalf of Farmington. You take it personally. You put your best foot forward every day with a smile. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember you down in Torrington. We talked a little bit about yeah. that the other day. So, you know, kudos to you. Well, thank you. And thank you all for all your service. I feel very supported by all of you. And uh, it's a pleasure to come to work every day. So I love what I do. So thank you very much. Thank you, Rose. Make a motion for a tentative approval for pages 14 and 15. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. The next uh, group was on page 17, and I think we have the library here, and I'll ask them to come up. They're on page 17, and they're line item 54608. It's a flat uh, line item of 2,975,000, and that is a 2.8% increase above uh, last year's budget. So I will turn that over to the library group, and you guys will introduce everyone. Can you all hear me? Yes. I need a better microphone. Hi, thank you, you for having us. I'm Jocelyn Kennedy, for those of you I haven't met. Um, I'm the executive director of the library. I've been here since September 5th. Um, I'm a resident of Farmington. I live in Unionville over in the Lake Garda area where we've owned property since 2014. It was a really exciting opportunity for me to be able to come back here uh, and be part of this amazing community. So I wanna thank you all for the opportunity to speak with you and I wanna thank the town manager's office and the director of finance and their teams because they're just incredibly supportive um, and of great assistance to the libraries. It really is a privilege to work at the Farmington Libraries and bring library joy to our residents every single day. On any given day at the libraries here at the main library on Monteith and across town at the Barney on Main, you'll find families with small children, you'll find teenagers, adults, all in the libraries. 
And they're there not just to check out books, but to connect with their neighbors and build their own communities within the broader community of Farmington. And it's really amazing to be part of that journey. I invite you to visit the main library at 10 a.m. on Friday mornings or the Barney on Tuesdays at 1045, where you'll find 50 or 60 toddlers and their caregivers as they leave our Tots and Tunes and Movers and Groovers program and make their way into our kids' space. There you'll see our earliest learners making new friends and exploring new spaces. You'll also see parents and grandparents and caregivers building foundational relationships that they might carry through their children's development and growth and into their own retirement as Farmington residents. It's truly amazing. Um, and the building at that time of day is just buzzing with like unfettered joy and exuberance. There is nothing more invigorating than a bunch of toddlers having a really great time. And then come back in the afternoon at 2.30 when our, the high school bell rings and 50 to 100 students descend upon the library. They overflow our spaces. They extend past our team space across the entire second floor of the building where they work on their homework or they unwind from their day. And it's noisy, it's controlled chaos, the energy levels are through the roof, but there's something really magical about seeing teenagers just being teenagers, doing their things in a space that is safe and has a loose structure while allowing them to be themselves. We also provide first-time jobs for teens through our PAGE program, and we really rely heavily on our teen volunteers to help with many of our larger events. So we're deeply grateful to be so close to the high school um, here at the main library where we can build those connections. On Tuesdays and Thursdays throughout the day, right, so I'm telling you all the times to come to the library, mm -hmm. the second floor is home to the town's adult education, uh, English as a second language classes. It is truly delightful to provide space uh, and this learning environment for our newest residents uh, here in town and in our adjacent community. Um, they're learning, and from my office, I can hear them and watch them grow in confidence as they master a new language and a new culture. It's truly inspiring. Throughout the day, community members use our study rooms and our meeting rooms to convene, to work, and to develop. They use our computers and our digital resources to grow their businesses, to share their expertise and knowledge with each other, and to create connections. Community members browse our shelves. They settle into comfortable chairs to read the newspaper or good book. They start conversations with each other. They meet new friends. It's really quite amazing. Um, local creators are in our space, building and creating in our maker space. Um, a gentleman was in the other day building a park. He makes guitars out of cigar boxes. And it was like, who knew? Really cool. Um, the whole space is vibrant and alive, and sometimes it's even quiet. The libraries also aren't just for people who can travel to our physical spaces. Our outreach, pro outreach program delivers reading materials and oftentimes the only human connection some of our homebound community members get on, on a weekly basis. We um, visit both folks in their individual homes and we're also visiting many of the facilities across town uh, where folks are in residence. They can't travel to us, so we go to them and bring the library joy into their homes. Our digital resources are available to anyone with a library card and an internet connection. When they download a book from the library onto their phone or stream a movie in their living room, they're bringing the library into their spaces. The library truly is wherever our patrons are, and that is an incredible thing. Libraries are all about partnerships. If you take a walk up the main stairwell in the library, um, here at the main library, you'll find an amazing art installation from students in Beth Reiser's art installation class here at the high school. You'll see book bags by the mailboxes here in Town Hall. Those are deliveries of library materials to classroom teachers across the school district. You'll find our librarians at Westwoods leading an after-school book club. We collaborate with the school district to provide early math and reading literacy programs to four and five-year-olds in our school readiness program. In April, as Rose said, we're partnering with economic development on uh, programming for our local our entrepreneurs, and we're hoping that we'll be able to turn that into a series and bring our new and creative business, future business owners into our spaces and help them build relationships with, with each other. 
And we're just really grateful for these partnerships and the many other partnerships we have across town. Since the start of this fiscal year, fiscal year 24, almost 16,000 people have attended library programs. Our meeting rooms were booked or reserved 3,500 times. Local creators used our makerspace for over 800 hours. Our librarians answered over 27,000 questions and lent more than 165,000 physical items to our residents. And we issued 859 new library <coughs> cards uh, to new residents. We want to continue to increase that number as currently more than half of our residents still need to come to get their library cards. So I don't know, y'all. Um, all of these services really are made possible by the support we receive annually from the town through your grant, as well as the generosity of the Friends of the Farmington Libraries and the FBGLA. Even more, none of these wonderful things at the Farmington Libraries would exist without our greatest asset, which is the staff of the library who daily build and maintain our collections and our relationships with and experiences for our community members. In fiscal year 25, the town's grant to the library with a modest increase of $86,000 over last year will support the amazing resources and services I've described above. We will also be reviewing our staffing and salaries to ensure that we are competitive in this tight market and are able to attract and retain the best library staff in the area. In 2025, we will embark on setting new priorities and strategies that allow us to find a new horizon for growth at the Farmington Libraries that continues to complement and support the incredible work of our community-focused town departments and continues to provide a center for community here in Farmington. And finally, I want to invite each of you to join us, in addition to all those other days that I'd love to see you in the library, I want to invite each of you to join us on Sunday, March 24th from 1 to 4 for our third Maker Fair featuring high and low tech maker crafts and science skills and early evening on June 17th in the parking lot for our summer reading kickoff. Thanks again for your consideration and your support and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Well, thank you very much. And obviously, you know, having two children, that was a great space when they were younger and my wife would bring them to just talk with other moms, let the kids sit there, run around, get rid of their energy. And now I've come into the library a lot and so used to you know, hearing kids and waiting for the librarian going, shh. Not but anymore. But created that space now where they can come down there, release some of that energy, be with their friends, be kids. So you're doing a fantastic job there. Yeah. I'll open up the questions. Dave. Again, I want to compliment, welcome again, Thank you're, you. you know, and, but uh, I want to compliment the library, the things that are happen there on a yearly basis and just what you're, the programming that you're talking about is just fantastic. I think, um, you know, libraries are evolving, right? I mean, you know that better than, than anyone, right? And, um, and so there's different things that you, you can see as you, your vision, you know, uh, looks out you're integrating and bringing in, I think those are all positive uh, movements. It's a modest increase, and we appreciate the fact that you're able to live within the, the modest increase. I guess my question is, what do you see down the road a little bit, maybe even beyond this year, as things that you see maybe that you would like to achieve, or like you think that you're making incremental progress to maybe evolve the library mm -hmm. to, to something? Um, I think one of our, I will say one of our challenges and it's an opportunity and and I know you've heard this from the town manager because it's the case across town we are an aging building our aging spaces so when I say that the teenagers come down and we have 50 or 80 teenagers if you come to the library the teen space is relatively small it's actually smaller than the town council room so our teens now are literally occupying the entire second floor of the library so we really need to revision that space and what it means and how we want to be engaged with our teenagers and how we can fit them into the library space in a way that doesn't foreclose that space to other people. So that's one sort of challenge slash opportunity that we have. Mm -hmm. um, my vision really is to find as many community connections and pull us all together. So libraries are community are cultural heritage organizations, just like many of the other organizations in town. Um, and I think there's lots of opportunities for us to continue to partner with other nonprofits as well as town agencies to, to really meet our residents where they are mm -hmm. 
whether that's here in the building or wh where they reside, um, and, and provide them with opportunities to build deeper connections within the community. Because that's the thing that's going to get people to stay here. It's what helps people that graduate from high school, they go away to college. Some people move back to town, some people don't, right? Mm -hmm. So what are the things that we can do, start building that foundation that really helps our community members feel grounded here, especially our younger community mm -hmm. members, so that they'll come back. And I'm really interested, and I'll stop talking. No, 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 that's fine. No, they have a, that, I'm know, really it's interested. It's lucky that I went first. That's all. There you go. So I can, so they, I can the, kind the of, The questions know. will be shorter. <laughs> um, I'm really interested in figuring out a way to connect with um, our community members who are in this gap space. So we have lots of families and parents, and when their kids sort of age out of our children's room, we don't see those parents anymore because they've got lots of stuff going on. Sure. Um, and then we see people come back around the time that they retire. So there's this gap, right, um, where we don't see people because they're living their best lives somewhere else. And, and ought they to be in the library? I would say yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think it creates, there's, there's not a lot of spaces where you can sort of collide with your neighbors mm -hmm. um, if you don't have a reason. And for lots of people in town, the reason is sports and kids and education or shared interests. So those, those are some of the things. Great. Thank you. Thank you for mm -hmm. your You're answers. Sure. Amy. I have no questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. For your presentation. It was very good. Thanks. This should be a long one. Go ahead, Keith. I'll keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think anybody that was here, I know that's not everybody, uh, a couple of years ago for um, the budget presentation from the library um, prior to Terry taking over, and the difference between even just that budget presentation and this budget presentation between um, board meetings prior to what they're like now and to what the actual library feels like you know, now in comparison to under previous leadership. I think anybody that's been dialed into the library would say it's just a vast improvement um, all around. And it's not to besmirch anybody that came before, it's just to say what we have now is really, really great and I think it's building towards something even better and it's a credit to the people that are in charge and that helped steward us through um, the two regimes. Uh, so thank you for that. The thing that we are lucky to have now from the new leadership is we have a you know forward-facing leadership that is out and about, a member of the community. Um, the thing that you touched on about community connections is very important, uh, utilizing um, you know, the synergies that you can create within Town Hall, uh, be it Rose or Kathy or anybody else, I think is incredibly smart and, and something good for the libraries to be doing. And then the last thing I'll say, which I took note of in our last board meeting, um, you know, as part of your budget. I mean, you've already done things, like I know we pulled all the weeds out of the drains and fixed some of that stuff. Um, <laughs> Ava doesn't remember Jocelyn's like second day on the job. She was bucketing water from one of the areas. So, you know, she has been in it, you know, from the get-go um, in whatever capacity necessary. but. When you said you want to attract and maintain the best staff possible, I know you're proactively um, helping to get more money in the pockets of your staff to mm -hmm. keep people and, and retain good staff. And as somebody who employs people too, it's just uh, the, the job market's changing and you really have to stay ahead of that stuff if you want to keep good people. It's easier, I think, to pay more for a good person than to go out and try to find someone at a lower level. So it's just, it's just smart, you know, we're, we're doing the right things at the library. So thank you and that's it, sorry. No, no questions. Just want to hear myself you. talk. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Sarah. I don't have any questions either. Just I really enjoyed your passion and energy and what you spoke about. So. Come on to the library. <laughs> yeah. Patty. No, no questions, but I want to have a shout out to the Seed Library at yes. Barney Library. My daughter and I went last year. She got such a kick out of it. We planted a lot of bees. So come back and we have more seeds. <laughs> <laughs> we will. We will. Think. I, I'm just always impressed by how many things things the library offers that are not books or traditional media, and it's just fantastic. Thank you. Brian. I just want to say as a former library board member, I really appreciate and support everything you guys do. And I was curious about those in-betweeners because I was thinking about <coughs> that all along. Uh, are we doing, and I just don't know, are we doing much uh, hybrid programming? to bring people who are in the library, engage them, but also people who are interested in the library, but at home and not coming in. What we have found is that people, the, the virtual event attendance has dropped off significantly as people have emerged from their, sort of emerged from the COVID mm -hmm. moment. So one of the things I've been talking to my programming librarian about is maybe less about the virtual 
where somebody is in their home participating in a program at the library, but our ability to bring in people from all over the country to present on topics that might pull that age group into the library because we can have those people attend as presenters virtually, um, which I think will expose, give us the opportunity to expose our community to a broader um, sort of type of programming that I think would appeal to those folks who are in between mm -hmm. and our bookends. digital um, publications our digital digital lending has that had any impact of the number of people who are visiting the library no well it's it's it it's hard for me to answer that question accurately because because of the covid gap where we really saw a decline in people coming into the building and we're now sort of where we were in 2019 and it's pretty even it's hard to say whether or not the digital um digital access will lead to a decline in physical presence in the library. Right now, we're really not seeing it's kind of where we were pre-COVID. No, I'm hoping that we keep everyone engaged, even if it's digital. Yeah. Well, and we have lots of people checking out materials through the online spaces and an equal amount <coughs> of physical items being circulated from our library. So I think that's it's a nice balance between what you can sort of read in your own home and what you come into the library to collect. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. You're doing a great job. Thank you to your Thanks. staff and to your board. Thank you. We will pass it along. Kathy, do we yeah, TA. do we do a TA just in this line item then? Because we uh, have uh, Interval House and everybody else still. Yeah, I just thank you, TA, the line item on the page. Kathy, do we just TA the line item on the page or the whole page? I just TA the line item. Okay. Thank you. So I make a motion for a tentative approval for line item 54608 on page 17. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Yeah. Someone's undercover. Uh, I apologize for not being in uniform. We were at a training all day. Came I remember Southern. those days. Yeah. Came from Southington oh, here, oh. so. <laughs> How are you, Chief? Undercover, for sure. I'm doing well. How are you? Very well, thank you. Do you want to introduce your second? Uh, yeah. Captain Tim McKenzie, <laughs> for those who you? haven't met him. Tim and I have been here. We're in our 25th year. We came in together. So here we are. Thank you. It's the sugar. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> There's two cookies. <laughs> Blame Amy. It's gonna, it's gonna crash at like six. He's gonna need some coffee. No more cookies. No more cookies. I apologize. For you gave him cookies. Is that what's going on here? Yes. Um, we're gonna be on pages 26. Um, 31. 26 to 31. No, sorry, it's not 31. I'm sorry. Let's get our pages right. 26 to 31. 31. No, it starts at 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. Yep. Hold on. And if you want to make it for the I'll record, I did train both of these me. people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's, what is this, Kat? Police is on 31 to 39, and then communications is after that. So we'll start with those ones. Good. All right. So just to let you know, on self-organized here hold on the police department's overall budget is 3.09 percent their salaries are included in those accounts and so the, the reality of it is it's almost a, a decrease it's uh it's very flat um there is no seasonal help in the police department there were seasonal employees used to be seasonal employees hired on the summer months to patrol the various walking trails and parks we eliminated those we're not able to bring them back that would be the second year the other uh item of interest is that the budget only funds two new 24-hour police vehicles um, the police department vehicle maintenance plan recommends replacing three 24-hour vehicles but we were not able to go back to three um, other than that, it's a, it's a pretty flat budget. Um, and does anyone have any questions? I have one. Yeah, so, go ahead. Sorry, we, we want to go in a row? I can no, wait. we'll go with you. Uh, the, we'll the, it, the, the, the seasonal help, because I know we, we, we cut that last year as part of the uh, cost-saving measures last year. 
was there, did you find any significant outcomes from, from that, be it, you know, vandalism on the trails or, you know, I don't know what you would find as. No, I, I would say overall, we were able to manage it um, okay. with the patrol. Um, if the incidents rise up, it would have been nice to have that. Yeah. But I think overall in the summer and during the hot months, we didn't see as much activity on the river. I think, you know, some places for people to cool off in the city and for the people that have been coming in that don't live in town, I think that has flattened out. So I think we were able to absorb it. People might have known not. If they got arrested, they would have been in your place, which has no AC. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're, on their, they're on their best behavior to make sure. Very good point. Yeah. Thank you. I, I do think, though, that with the trails, that we do get a, quite a bit of compliments when we do have a lot of people on, of, you know, on Patrol. the trails patrolling and things like that. And I'm hopeful, even though I know Colin said, or the chief said, that we handle it. But it really isn't that great of a having a police officer when you could have a, a you know a much lower paid person on the trail and luckily last year we did overall not have as much action on the trails as yeah. that at, that we've had in the past so again um we're hopeful that you know we'll make do and obviously the police will be out there when we need to but i think we are and one of the things i was going to talk about a little bit and with all the departments with the 2.8 percent budget there is reductions of service in our in our town operation i think we're going to still be able to do a, maintain a high level of service but you are starting to chip away at things and this would be the second year that we are chipping away and when we talk to russ and you talk to all the departments and one of the things you'll see and um that what the department's asked for and what I have given them, there's a substantial um, change. And I think Kat can pull it up that I think I forgot what we wrote in my report, but I think it was over a million dollars that I took out of this budget. And so there's, it's very, very flat and it's actually a reduction. And we're not, I'm not, every department is gonna say all the different things are, that, um, that they're missing out of it because I think we are still maintaining a level of service. But I do want to make it clear in each of the departments that it is we are chipping away at at the services, uh, you know. So, Amy. Well, we appreciate your sacrifices for the taxpayers, definitely. Thank you. And we appreciate everything you do do. So hopefully, things will change. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, definitely appreciate your service and your dedication, uh, and you know the whole the whole police force and you know what the what they do. You know, I mean, we definitely. I think I, I would speak more to what Kathy just said. I think it's the chipping away, right? That's, you know, that we understand it. And I think uh, you know some of my questions over the over the past few days. That chipping away, finally, we're going to need to you know, address that. And we're going to need to help every department in, a, in some kind of material way um, to, to make sure we don't compromise operations to the point where, you know, there is an incident. And we wish that, you know, for, for whatever reasons, we might have come together and, and you know, put, put more funding in a, in a certain spot. But if you had to prioritize any of the cuts that you've had to make or the sacrifices, is there something that's on the top of the list that you would, you would definitely kick back in, um, or something that you've you know had to reduce a little bit? Is there is there a priority? I guess is my question that you see, it would be the first thing you would do if if you if more money was available. Well, in order to maintain services, people, you know, so the the summer help is something that you know, we really enjoyed having because it, it takes a little bit of a burden off of those district cars. Um, but if you're talking about materials and equipment, um, we're gonna get to a point where we, we have to address the fleet in a more substantial way. Um, we've done a great job working with Joe over the last couple of years where we had to really weather a shortage of vehicles and it wasn't a budget thing, it was, you know, availability. So we have been able to get a shipment of vehicles that came in to replenish our fleet that were due to us in past budgets. So that's why we're able to maintain it. But to continue to chip away on a yearly basis, we're gonna eventually feel that. So that will probably be my- One of your, one of your top priorities. Going you know, forward right, where going we forward. have to address that so we don't end up in a bad situation. 
Yeah. But right now we're able to maintain. Right. Okay. Thank you. And thank you for you know your assessment. Thank, thank you very you. much. Yep. Sarah. I don't have any um, specific questions. I'll just thank you for everything. And I'll just give a little special shout out. My kids are in the, the elementary schools and they talk about the officers who come to the school. And just yesterday, Abby was saying how Officer Alicia helped her with something in the school and how great that was. And of course, they love Nash. Yeah. So. Right. <laughs> Nash is the most popular yeah, officer. Yeah, he is the most popular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he is the most popular, for sure. But we appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. thank you. The for school all. officers, that's a tough gig and yeah. they do a great job. They do. So they we're really lucky do. to have them. Thank you. Patty. Um, I, I will, I guess, in some ways, reiterate or piggyback on what Dave said. I, 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 and picking up on the chief's comments about what you really want back, people, summer help. A, as a runner, someone who runs alone, I always had great comfort seeing the occasional patrol officer, um, even if it was just because if I'd gotten tripped and fallen and gotten injured, to me, there was that um, added assurance that there would be help eventually. And, and I really am disappointed that we can't bring that back this year. I think it's an important, I think it's a really important contribution to the town and to safety. But I do have one question on page 35. Um, at the top line, the full time line is increasing from the act from the actual or estimated for 12 months by close to $120,000. I'm just wondering, is that a contractual base change or what's the trigger for the change? Because it looks like the full-time counts are staying the same. Joe, if you can field that one. Yeah, basically what it is, is periodically the police, the police department shifts where people are paid from. So this is really a shifting of some of the personnel from uh, either patrol or from special services in, into the, this uh, unit. Um, for example, you know, sometimes the, uh, but basically that's really what it would boil down to is, is a shifting of personnel. There's no change in personnel, no, no additional personnel. It's just a matter of somebody went from one division to another division. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything else. Brian. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, like everyone else, thank you for everything you do. And it, it is a real comfort seeing you guys out there. You're very visible. Appreciate seeing you there and at the mall. So thank you for all that you do. And I just did have one question on, on page 33, because I want to make sure we're not missing anything. That is, last, this last, you know, 23-24 estimate uh, was higher than we anticipated at 448, and we're down to 321 and change. And I just want to make sure we're not missing something essential there. Joe, can you talk on that one? Yeah, and again, that's another position shift. Okay, I mean, I didn't know, but I just wanted to ask, make sure that. One of the things that I'm finding out is when you shift administrations from one chief to another chief, chiefs like to put people in different, they classify people in different ways. So, um, you know, sometimes an SRO would be in, under one chief, an SRO would be in investigation, and another place an SRO would be in, in patrol or, or in special projects. So what I do is I, follow wherever the chief puts his people and I move the money around. As long as you're comfortable, I just want to <laughs> yeah, The numbers are the same for a number of people. Okay. So, yep. Yeah, the, the numbers of people have not changed. It's yep. just where they're being pay, uh, paid from. Mm -hmm. Fair yep. enough. I appreciate that. Just want to make sure you're covered. Yep. We're good. Thank you, Brian. You got it. Well, I think that's all for the questions, but thank you for everything. You know, I've always supported you 100%. Uh, great work last month at the mall with everything that was going on. could imagine how big of an area you had to cover, especially for tracking five multiple suspects and the recovery of the handgun. So a, a great job, and especially with the help of Harford and West Harford. So for sure. doing Thank awesome you. out there. Yeah. Appreciate it. Town of Farmington is very fortunate for our police department. We have a, a great police department and uh, it's uh, they work really, they, it's really a blessing for us. It is. Thank, Thank you, you, Chief. Appreciate Thank it. you, Captain. Thank you, guys. Yep. You're welcome. Make a motion to tentatively approve pages 31 through 39. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Opposed. The next one for the chief is uh, page 40 and 41. That motion passes. Okay. <laughs> now you're cutting me off. Yeah. See? <laughs> yeah. No more cookies. No more cookies. Kathy needs one. 40 and 41 are the communication center. 
and that's that's our dispatch. And let me see what the and CMED. And so the overall increase in the community center is 1.23% and CMED is 0.31%. So very flat. And this is our, our dispatch center. And our EMS service, um, that is, Colin, what is that again? That's the, the state, everybody has to belong to CMED um, for um, when we have something that's beyond our scope and it gets dispatched out for assistance from uh, other medical facilities. Oh, that's right. Then we have to pay that every year. Yeah, standard. Correct. Got it. Does it show in here how much Burlington pays for the dispatching we do for them? That's in the... Uh, revenue. Revenue. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I want to talk about revenue. I can, I can no problem. Thank you. Brian, have any questions? I do not. Patty? No questions. Sarah? No questions. Keith. No questions. Amy. No questions. And Dave. I'm all set. Make a motion for a tentative approval for pages 40 and 41. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, Chief. Thank, Thank you, you, Captain. Appreciate it. Godspeed, gentlemen. All right. Have a good night. going to do fire next with uh, Tom. That's At pages 26 through 30. Hi, Tom. Hi. Everyone knows uh, Tom, our fire director. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, 27. How are you, Mr. Fitzgerald? I'm well. How are you? Good, sir. Thank you for coming in. My pleasure. So the fire department budget just uh, overall is, is uh, flat or under. It's at a 1.43% increase. There's really um, not much to talk about. It's pretty standard. Uh, so I don't know if you have any specific questions on it. We do have the two fire trucks for the bonding, which is important for us. But other than that, um, Tom is now, what, in your second year? Yes. Second year, really getting used to the department, the volunteers, and the, the paid staff. And one of the things maybe to mention a little bit is that we have had a little bit of turnover in the career fire department. Um, but we are working to continue to recruit for the career firefighters. But it is a difficult um, situation because just how our system is set up there's it's not a traditional kind of a career fire department and you don't have a lot of room for advancement and so uh it isn't that uncommon for the career people to turn over but we have had some turnover which has been driving up um, some overtime costs and things like that but our volunteers have been um available and uh we've been tom and i've been going through a lot of different things in the budget now that he's been here um two years and just looking at how the organization is run and some different things. So uh, we feel good about it, and we've been checking different response times and different things just to see where we're at, and we, we feel pleased with some of that. Excellent. Sarah. How many questions? Patty. Um, I just have a question, page 28. I, I don't, it's just more of a terminology. Per diem firefighter? What does that mean? You want to ask, answer that, Tom? Sure. Um, so the per diem um, people are uh, mostly volunteers, and they're able to work in um, the other firehouses that they don't volunteer in. Um, so they can, they're essentially part-timers, but they're just not allowed to work in their own firehouses that they volunteer in. They're, they're really, um, uh, they're a big part of, how we've been able to fill positions the past uh, couple of months um, with the departures that we've had. So um, that's essentially, they're, they're qualified. They have all the certifications of a regular firefighter. They're just um, titled per diem, but they're essentially part-timers. They just can't work in the same firehouse that they volunteer in. And that has to do, Patty, with union issues and things like that. Okay, thank you. I don't have anything else. Brian. Nothing other than to say thank you for the first response work that you guys do. I mean, I see out there in some tough spots, and I appreciate you being there. Yep, we were very fortunate to have a very, very good fire department in the town. 
So the volunteers and the career people all do a great job. Busy. Mm. Busy. When we've been looking at some of the numbers and the responses and things like that, so it amazed how many medical calls and things that the fire department goes on and the volunteers and both the career. Uh, Tom came from New Haven, and he always says, very impressed with <coughs> our both our volunteers and our career staff. Yeah. Thank you. Dave. Um, I guess the, you know, again, I think Kathy <coughs> mentioned it. I mean, you, the career people, right? There, there's only so much movement in, a, in, in the scale of operation that we have, obviously, that leads to departures and things like that. How many departures have we had in the, in the near term? We recently had three, three. Pe three people out of the nine. Okay, three out of the nine. Yeah. And, and, um, and so, obviously, you know, with the per diem, we're not missing anything because we have great volunteers and you're positioning the volunteers in different houses where they need their expertise is there, so we, we're covered. Do you think we'll be able to fill those departures? Yeah, we actually um, have two people who are in the final steps of background. Okay. So in the next week or so, we should have at least two of those positions filled. Okay, great. That was my one question. Thank you. Amy. I want to thank you for your service. My son was a volunteer EMT for Tunks' Hose for many years. And um, I know how hard he worked and how many call I was amazed at how many calls there are throughout the town. And it's, I don't know how you do it with the level of, sort of, level of people that you have, but I do appreciate it. Um, do the departures go to other towns or, or what, what is the... Typ typically um, they go to bigger departments. Bigger departments. departments. Yeah, okay. bigger departments. And it, again, it, with a, as a career person, we don't have a, a tremendous amount of overtime where a, you know, a bigger fire department would have that. We're really a daytime fire department, which has its benefits too for some of the yeah. firefighters because they, they have the weekends off and some different things which you wouldn't typically have if you were in a fire department like New Haven and so it does have some advantages but you know some of the um, firefighters they look and they go to bigger places I think where Portland was one that the Portland Recently, Maine yeah. Uh, yeah, Portland, Maine. one to Memphis one to Milford oh, mm -hmm. wow. so different different places wow yeah, and we should probably, they're not here tonight, but give a shout out to our uh, volunteer chiefs and, uh, you know, our regular volunteers, but really our chiefs, a tremendous amount of volunteer time with the training and the calls. And we, you know, we, like I said, we've been just reviewing some different things and how the, the chiefs are at, like every call that goes, you know, it's really, it's, uh, they're such an asset to the town of Farmington. They are. Keith. I had a question on that staffing too, just to piggyback, I know that's about all the questions have been. Do we tend to attract um, to those uh, full-time positions, um, to your point about the schedule being a little bit more workable, do we tend to attract um, newer firefighters that are kind of getting their foot in the door, or do we tend to attract people that have had longer careers that are looking for a change of pace? I, I would say it's typically newer firefighters. Okay. Um, we'd like to attract those kind of you know retirees looking for their second you know, Swing career at, at, at our fire department. Um, but it, it's been a, a little bit more on the newer firefighters. Yeah. Okay. And a lot, a lot of times our career firefighters were volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. So they go volunteer to career and then maybe if they are, they want to go someplace where they can become a lieutenant or a captain. Right. We are sort of capped off at that stuff, right? Exactly. But one of the things that Kat had said where we are trying to look at maybe retiree um, firefighters, you know, to come some, instead of the, we haven't really seen that because it, as Tom always says that if he knew that he could work nine to five or and not work on weekends that, you know, yeah, retire that's when, and become, say that, I was maybe <laughs> have, have your second career as a firefighter wouldn't be, wouldn't be too bad. Wouldn't be bad at all. <laughs> At least we have a great farm system. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So if that's all the questions, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, thank Tom. You. Thank you. Make a motion for a tentative approval for pages 26 through 30. We have a motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thanks. Thanks. Tom, again, thanks to you yep. and the volunteers. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Good job. Good night. Best haircut in town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jealous? No, I, listen, I'm modeling it for him. Everyone knows uh, Russ Arnold. And we have, he has a, a 
bunch of different pages. So maybe we'll start at the beginning. We have pages um, 43 through 53. Why don't we start there? So this is public works and, um, and highway. And just some things, just make some overall comments about it. Um, the overall pub highway public works, highway and grounds and engineering is a decrease of 1.5%. Um, so public works is unfortunately an area where, again, public safety, the police and fire, we try to, we have to, we're funding it a little bit higher than public works and um, public works has seen some decreases in the last couple of years or it's very flat. Um, there's really, I don't think, there's no summer help funded in the highway department. And again, with what Colin was saying with the, on the rails to trails, that's a re relatively new program, but really the seasonal help in the highway department is, is a big hit. That is a big hit because of the fact that there's, it's the busy time for, you know, the, I would call it the quality of life type of issues where they can help um, do the pocket parks, the weeding, the trash pickup, the things like that. So we weren't able to bring that back um, this year. We only had one seasonal um, employee at Westwood's golf course instead of two. Um, and I think, Russ, correct me if I'm wrong, we, we do bring over a highway person. Right, we lose a highway guy to go over and help maintain the golf course. Of course, so we have one less highway person, which again is difficult because during that time of the year, it's, it's a busy time for the highway department. Um, and the only other thing, just to note, and I wrote the numbers down somewhere, we, we, um, we, uh, we switched people, we in the highway and grounds department, we eliminated a capital projects position and in the engineering and I mean in the building department, we had an assistant building official, but it, no, it's just uh, different employees and Kat, maybe you can get the pages just so I could show just where yeah. it is. So the building inspector is on page 42 and you'll see the full time account has increased and that is the money from the capital projects leader position was kind of filtered into this account. And so if you go to the other account. Yep, so then if you go to, it's in the full time account, that is 44. I'm sorry. 44. 44. Page 44, in the full time line, um, the capital and projects leader has been removed from this one. You can actually see it on the narrative side where last year the projects leader won, there was one position and now we're proposing zero. So that eliminates that one from this account. And that position was vague. It was a, we didn't have the position, and so that's we have some vacancies, and so instead of we couldn't fill that position, and instead we filled building official positions. And why that happened was because we had an early retirement. Well, not un, I would say relatively unexpected retirement of our building inspector, and when we went out for building inspectors, we actually found two building inspectors, which was really, really great because of the fact with the, um, how busy we are and also with the high school project. So we wound up filling two building officials and not having the capital projects person. So you, you can see both in the accounts, it's the uh, same total amount of employees in the division, but just in different spots. Questions, Brian? Uh, really, I was just going to ask what we just covered about, you know, uh, the challenge of doing it without summer help for you, because. Yeah, the complaints still can come in. Mm -hmm. um, we pick up garbage on the rails to trails on Mondays and Fridays. Um, it takes away from grass cutting, striping, um, things like that. And as you all may or may not be aware that we maintain all the fields for the high school programs. Uh, as far and recreation so we're pulling typically two people from the parks department for about four to five hours on monday and friday to go and pick up all the garbage at all the parks you know tunsis mead little league um, down the rails to trails which is uh as kathy said before it's slowed down since covid i mean we really during covid it was crazy um, but we've we're pretty much normaling off, but it still takes a lot of time and effort. Listen, I don't like, I pick up garbage when I walk the trail and it is what it is and people look at me kind of strange, but 
that's how I am, right? But you don't want, I don't want that impression just because we don't have bodies that we're not taking care of what we own. So that's what we do. And I, some people aren't happy that, you know, people call. The biggest thing we get is people will pick up after their dog and then leave the bag on the side of the trail. I see that all the time. It's insane. I don't understand it. Uh, you're better off leave the, leave the mess as it is and let it disintegrate, but now you've just preserved it <laughs> for as long as the age of the bag. So it is what it is, but the complaints come in. You know, it is what it is. We deal with it, and we get on a rotation, and we address those areas as needed. Well, thank you to you and your staff for covering that because I know it's not easy. Yeah. Oh, it's t it's, we have over 12 miles of trail. Well, one of the things that we did a while back, and, and Russ and his whole engineering staff, they're really, I mean, we're short-staffed as it is just because it's hard to fill vacancies and things of that nature, and um, their budgets are low. But one of the things we did w way back, I don't know, a long time ago, is that we made the whole department up the public works division. And what that enables us to be able to do is that even if you work in the treatment plant, you're a public works person and that if you have a CDL and everyone's required to, they can plow snow for us and we pull people. And so we, we our contracts are set up that someone in the highway department can go to the Westwoods golf course. And I have to say that that's actually very unusual in municipalities of when, when you have a unionized workforce that we have that flexibility. And thank gosh we do because we really need to pull people from the treatment plant and Again, right now, with it's it's we're having trouble filling positions, and it's just the economy and things of that nature. But between uh, Russ and his direct reports, really do a good job of really shifting people around to try to um, make do for what we have. But that said, again, that there is going to be, and I think it, you'll see it more in the highway and grounds division. You know, a chipping away of things between equipment, um, not funding equipment the way we should be and really the operating budget the way we should be. Uh, I mean, we're still, I think, high level of service, but I think I call it the quality of life things that you're gonna see. And I think, Russ, you wanted to talk a little bit about that, that, uh, that the mower for the, um, that's in the capital, that it's just that I added that back in and how pleased you were that it went back back into the my budget. And I'm, I know we have to talk about capital, whether we'll be able to keep it in there, but, you, I, when I saw Jim Rose Basin today at the thing, he was saying that they were welding the wheels or something right. along those lines. So one of our mowers uh, is probably older than all of your cars that we have, both of our mowers. And uh, last fall, late last fall, the back axle broke. And being the fall, we got done with the season. We, <coughs> now it's coming time, we gotta get it fixed. Try, can't find an axle. Just they don't make them anymore and it's, basically impossible. There's no mower graveyard that we can go to and pull one off. So the guy, one thing we were very fortunate to have is um, very talented people who work for us. Mm -hmm. And one of the guys down the garage is he's going to get some steel pipe. He's going to cut it, weld it onto the tire and the frame to create a space that we can fix, weld the axle to weld the tire to so that there's something to actually hold the tire in place to the frame, which is not a great remedy, but it's a remedy to help get the mower back on service and get out and continue to mow that we need to mow for the fairway. Until um, it breaks. Huh? Until, Until it breaks. breaks. Until it breaks again. Yes, it's, you know, and you won't, again, I've said it before, you don't hear me complain, it is what it is, but I, people need to realize that things are breaking down, they are getting older, mm -hmm. How many people have a 1990 vehicle in their driveway? We've got about a dozen, <laughs> you know, that are that vintage, not from a truck to a mower to equipment. And it's a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, but we're really, as with the fire truck, as you've heard, we're getting to a point where you'll see that our expenditures for maintenance, it's not maintenance, it's repair work. Yeah. You know, you're not change, just changing oil. You're just chasing problems. Right. And that's what you're doing. You're exactly. Problems. 100% and it's but again it is what it is um, we still got to get our things done and take care of what we got to take care of I mean we have over 50 acres of field space that we got to maintain and how many of you want to get a complaint on Saturday morning from 1200 angry parents that the grass is unplayable or it's four inches or five inches tall right it's just nobody wants to hear that but we do it and we get through and do what we got to do and 
Um, it's one, a challenge some weeks. Some weeks it's a real challenge. And when we got to keep pulling people uh, to f change things and get chase things down, it's tough. Yeah. And then, as you all may be aware, that we do, besides placing the blacktop in, on our roadways for our paving bond, we do everything else in house. Mm -hmm. I, we put things out to bid when we have to, um, but we can do things quicker and faster and more economical than hiring a contractor. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if we hire a contractor and everyone pushes, oh, we've got to do more paving, we've got to do more paving. Well, there's only, we, we go off the vendor in place paving program through the state of Connecticut. Tilcon is the vendor this should, past couple of years. We only have some, they only have so many paving crews that have to pave in about 60 different towns. So that, when do you pave? When everyone else is paving, right? So it's not like, oh, we'll pave in January because it's not happening. We're trying, we're fighting the schedule. We're already on the schedule for our uh, next two rounds. We've got on back in November and told them, here's when we're ready and we got to go. Because if you don't, you're coming into October and November and it's not a good, system, good situation at that point. That said, if we hire contractors to do the work we do, our road bond gets expended, depleted quicker. So our road paving gets depleted. So that's why we do, but that's the method to our madness. Mm -hmm. um, Scott Zinke and I decided that um, 20 years ago. And we've proven the fact that we do a lot of paving, more so if you talk to any other towns. Uh, some of our counterparts are like, you did what? Mm -hmm. You know, you did how much? And you, we did, because we do it. And they, our, our guys, they've, this is our, our custom now. We don't dabble in it, we do it. And our guys go out and we get very few complaints during our paving program. And it's been very successful, and we're very proud of that. Yeah, well, I think one of the things that we, because the budgets are so tight, and it, it actually, and it's a good thing in some ways, it, it forces us really to reevaluate how we're doing things. And Jim Rose Basin is relatively new as our superintendent, and it's sometimes it's, it's nice to have a, a fresh set of eyes come in and look at stuff and say, are we really doing it the best way we could be doing it? And, and, and now sometimes we're just forced because we just don't have the personnel and say, well, why don't we do it this way? And, you know, again, we all get set in our ways sometimes and we just keep on doing it. And Jim is like, no, well, I think we can do it this way. I think it would be better. And it does, you know, they're always thinking about different ways of how to do, do different things. So... And one thing I would like to say about the building inspector, I know I'm going to get yelled at later or tomorrow morning. I, know. Oh, I never yell. <laughs> okay. Um, one thing that everyone has to realize, and Kathy had kind of alluded to it, was that we haven't had two building inspectors uh, for about 15 years. So we've been operating under one building inspector. We've tried hiring other building inspectors. We couldn't find one that would work. Um, and I, so it's difficult when you only have one person, you know, whether they're sick or on vacation. Uh, people have grown accustomed to, and Chris Forian did an excellent job yeah. by himself, and Steve did a good job while he, when he was here. Um, but people don't want to wait. You know, they want to keep building and keep moving. And it was tough, and even finding part-time people to do building inspections was tough. Um, so our, during our transition, when we found these two, I would, you know, I went to Kathy, and we had a long discussion about it. And with not only with the high school going on, we've got five apartment building projects; mm -hmm. three are underway. Um, we have a lot of work coming up, and could have, in addition to our typical residential uh, permits that go on. So that's part of the background of having the two building inspectors. Mm -hmm. We cover more ground. It's basically 24 hour, and you're getting an inspection. You know, people will call with an emergency and they go, and we take care of that as things come up. But there are th other towns in our surrounding area that have a two or three week waiting period. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I couldn't do it, right? I'd lose my mind if I said, oh, I, I'll see you in three weeks. And we, it would not, it's not acceptable here in Farmington. So part of that is, that was I, my plea to Kathy to get the two building inspectors and cash in that other, pro that other position was for that, and especially with our upcoming uh, development projects that are on the horizon and here. Thank you. <laughs> I so lost track. I think we're at Patty now for questions. <laughs> um, Russ, I just want to say your folks do a really good job in my neighborhood. We have a couple of small swaths of land that I, our town owned, and I, I know I've seen folks out mowing in the, on Saturday afternoon. Um, 
So I know that they're really busy and you're doing, you know, you're, you're making everything work. Um, and the creative solutions of having everyone sort of um, contractually obligated to be pushed and pulled to what's needed, I, I think that probably helps a lot with the, with just in terms of figuring out staffing and trying to make things work. Um, so I, I don't think I have any questions other than on um, a question about the material and supplies line regarding road salt on page 47. When just it's more of a curiosity point. When do we purchase road salt? Because I know the seven. I see the seven month actual is sixteen forty four, but the estimate is one hundred and sixty seven thousand. So we purchase basically throughout the year. We're required <laughs> to purchase salt a, a minimum of Joe. How many uh, tons? Seven hundred tons. Seven. We got to purchase okay. a minimum of seven hundred tons. So we try to a couple years ago. Um, we had a, 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 a light winter, so we were able to put more salt in the barn and we try to keep our barn full, but we have to buy 700 tons every year. Uh, and they're required to supply that plus uh, 150% or 50%. What's the number they got to give us for, if we need We it? have to buy 50% of what we tell them we're, we think we're going to use for the year. So regardless of how much we use, we have to buy at least 50%. Right. So we tell them we're going to buy 1,400 tons, so we have to buy 700. Uh, so we, in a normal, usual winter, winter we, we use about four, 12 to 1,400 tons of salt. So we're gearing, and, and if we put that in, then we have to buy half of that. Um, so what we try to do is, uh, right now, I'm assuming it's not going to snow again this year, we probably won't be snow. How dare you? We'll <laughs> take stock of what's in the, you know, the salt shed, and it'll fill the shed at this point. Fill our, meet our quota. I don't think we've met our quota yet. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll meet our quota this year. And then next year, as we start to draw it down, we'll start to reorder it. So. Right. So it's, we're per basically purchasing it throughout the year as we need it. Okay. Thank you. The sugar's wearing up, so Brian, right? A quick question. Thank you. Do we ever sell um, sell any surplus salt? Do we ever do that, or do we just hold We could make a deal if you want to do something like <laughs> that. <laughs> if that's your suggestion, I'm good with it. No, we do not sell anything. No. Really, you drop if it off. was ever short, we could help. <laughs> if we have problems, uh, we'll work with other towns. We have a couple towns oh. that we work exclusively with. If, if they need something or they run out for whatever reason, deliveries didn't come, we work back and forth. We you know, it's one for one. We don't lose anything. They don't lose anything. Mm -hmm. um, we have very good relationships with a couple adjoining towns. Excellent. Um, so that everyone's taken care of because, you know, we all need to be safe. So, yeah. But uh, as far as selling, mm, yeah, no we had, was it 10 years ago? Yeah. And we had to have. ship all the people up to Winstead to get the salt. Yeah. We had on a Saturday, what do we have, like seven trucks because yeah. we, we weren't getting salt. Ah, the state, we the bad went to the state yeah. and took all the salt. The, the state just basically overrode everybody and took all the salt from every, everybody. So, and Russ found salt in, I think, Winston. Yeah. Winston or Winston Thomaston? Yeah. yeah. Russ, Russ calls and says, we're going to take all our uh, big dump trucks up to wherever Winstead it is, and the, all the trucks went up and picked up all the salt and we took just, it back. We did four runs. <laughs> we did four, we did, six or eight yeah. trucks. Very, we did very creative, runs. but we needed salt. We yeah, really do. <laughs> so we commandeered a few, but no one ever got caught. <laughs> nice. Or you paid for it. You paid for it. <laughs> yeah. I was no, no, but no, but as far as selling, we don't sell anything. Um, but we work, we work together with, like I say, with a couple towns, yeah. uh, because you know, we it, you never know what you're going to need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have very good relationships with a couple towns, and knock on wood, they still. Thanks for having those. They're going to be here as long as I am. I hope. Mm -hmm. So, Sarah. Um, just a quick question, just going back to the seasonal help, and I, I think it said in the book that you, you typically would want like four summer positions, and is that? Full time, part time, like, and what is what's the cost usually associated with that? Like, thinking it's usually time. minimum wage, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's for seasonal employees that work the full mm -hmm. hours of the day. So the it's six, full time, but they're just seasonal. seasonal. Right, right. right. Typically, like middle of May through August, mm -hmm. and we try to get college kids eighteen and older. 
uh, just because of the equipment, the weed whackers and stuff, and the power they yeah, possess the for training. The cost of um, I, it's usually around 20, it's been around 20, 24,000. Is that there's like a 20, yeah, 20, yeah, 20, 20 24,000 dollars, right. yeah. 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 Right. And it's, uh, a couple of years it was tough getting kids to work. Uh, for years we had people who were repeat kids that would come back three, four years in a row, and then finally we had to say, okay, that's enough, you've learned the system too well. <laughs> we wouldn't let him come back, but it, it's just tough. I mean, listen, I got to knock any school system, but nobody's pushing, you know. But there hasn't been a push in recent years to become a you know a public works employee, uh, an HVAC guy, or an electrician, or a plumber. Um, that's not. There's no glamour in that, right? And I'm not saying there's glam. There's. It's just a perception. Um, but I'm glad to see now. There's a lot of kids who are going and doing pursuing. You know the community college aspect, and they're going to a trade school, or they're working and going to become a tradesperson. Because we get a lot of people come in or call and say, "Hey, I need a plumber. Hey, I need a, an electrician." And a lot of them today, they don't want to do the bad job or the dirty job. They want the, "Hey, I'll replace your sink for 500 bucks, and I'll walk away. It's a nice, clean job." Um, but the other part is just they don't. A lot of people don't return calls. Um, so that's where it's, it was difficult to get good kids and we get, oh, I'll take it, I'll take it. And they show up and they get, They don't like picking up litter. They don't like picking up litter. They don't <laughs> like getting up for being at work at 6 a.m. Exactly. So it's, it is what it is. But, we, you know, it is having at least two of them, would, it takes that burden off. You know, even if they're going to get pick up parts or they're doing the garbage and they're doing the trimming, um, knock on wood, it's, you know, we haven't had a lot of complaints, but couple of years ago what was that two or three four years ago when the, we didn't have it yeah and the you know things were growing it was one of those springs it's like now and all of a sudden the rain came and grass is growing like crazy weeds are growing like crazy and the people were complaining you know everything didn't we couldn't get to everything and we'd go and mow and we're you know mowing five days a week mm -hmm. and come Monday you're back to a field that has three or four inches of grass on it so, knock on wood, we have a nice, steady, easy spring this year. Mm -hmm. No, no more rain. <laughs> yeah, get some work release program going. Yeah. I, you have a contact, don't you? <laughs> he was just here a while ago. He just <laughs> left. <laughs> Keith. Um, no, we're we're certainly lucky to have uh, you and and the good relationship you have with Kathy's office, and um, I think with your example, your staff works both hard and smart, and you know finds creative solutions things. So we're very fortunate for that. Um, I don't know that it needs to be said. I'm very supportive of keeping that mower in the Capitol Park, um, whatever that's worth now, um, and just say thank you for all. I mean, we don't want to make, you know, it's that there's that fine line between taking advantage of some like something, someone like you has to offer, and that we're finding those solutions and we're organizationally really well, and then taking advantage to the point where you know we are setting ourselves up you know, to, to really slide downhill when, when one domino comes out of place. And so that's where, you know, we have to balance with this stuff. So as much as we can, I know you know that, but. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate it. It's, yeah, and, it's difficult. And we're yeah. trying to, again, trying to phase some stuff back in. You know, I think that's important. You know, hopefully, you know, like even with the cars, with the police department, they, we can't do it all, but I mean, we want to. That's why we can sneak a mower in, yeah. you know, or something like that. Yeah, exactly. It takes the burden off of next year as exactly. opposed to having to slide that back in again. Exactly. Um, I remember a couple of years ago at the Christmas recognition, I don't know if it was the same mechanic, but one of your guys was there like Christmas time, but in t-shirt, you could Nick. see the grease under his fingernails and got recognition for all the work he does. And it's like, we're just really lucky to have people like that. And right. I think that they want to be here because they see, you know, you in there doing those things. And so for your whole staff, and it, I mean, just drive in the middle of a snowstorm. Like for, I go to Middletown when it was the last big snowstorm we have. And it's like, you drive through Farmington, you make it fine. As soon as you go through Cook Street, you hit Plainville, you're sliding everywhere because no one's plowed. And so it's like, we, we are very fortunate to have good public works here. Yeah. Now we have some good people, that's for sure. And yeah. listen, we allow them to think, right? It's, I don't want anyone to be a robot. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna be a robot, don't, I'm, you're, you'll find a way out. I can't do it. You need yeah. someone, you gotta be quick on your toes and figure things out. And that's, we're fortunate to have those kind of people. Yeah. All right. We can also discuss the, the capital when we get to it too. Yeah, sorry, I'm jumping ahead, yeah. but no I heard the mower and I'm pro mower. <laughs> nice. Put that on a bumper sticker. Yeah. You want to operate the mower? Uh, you, Russ would rather have me not operate the mower. But. 
Keith, we'll try. Keith, your haircut says it all. I do. I, I do. I, I, I do the greens. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, any questions? Uh, no questions, but I do appreciate your sacrifices, and I do understand that you don't have a wish list. You have a need list, and I appreciate that. And I thank you for your efficiency and everything you do to make it work. Thank you. Yep. Dave. Yeah, so there's a couple things. Uh, one, I think, Russ, you do a great job, and obviously all the things you touch, you know, the, I think Kathy talked about it very clearly, everything's under one umbrella, so you have a lot of flexibility on how you can position forces, which is an outlier. I mean, I think Kathy talked about it. It's, it's very different than a lot in municipalities, towns, and cities throughout. I pull a lot of permits and do a lot of work in a lot of different jurisdictions, and this is certainly a, a, you know, a unique place, which is fine. Yeah. I think it's great because I think what you just said just before uh, I spoke was that you want people to think, you want people to be able to operate and solve problems. And I think attracting people to it is, I think, also a positive because you know, there's a number of people that don't get pigeonholed anymore into just one discipline. You know, right. They're able to do a few things. It probably works back and forth. Some Absolutely. people are more want to do one thing, but I think that tracks a certain type of worker, and I think we're, we're better for that, right? But working off of Keith's uh, comments, you know, you're, you're at that point where you're, you know, it is so, so over, everybody's all hands on deck, and they're moving in a, in a lot of different ways, and we, we haven't dropped the ball. I think Kathy really speaks to that high level of service and so forth, but... I, I just want to make sure that, like Keith, it doesn't all of a sudden come to just a, a tremendous drop-off. We lose a couple people or a couple, two or three key people, and then and then you're in a real you're you're in you're in a you're in a, you're in a different you're in a different environment. Right. And uh, so with that said, I, the, and I understand the business uh, building official and the assistant building official. I think that was a great move. Not having the capital and the capital highway project leader one. What what did, what were you envisioning for that? I mean, for that position, what were they going to actually do? We still we still have one position. It was going to be more of a team of the yeah, two people. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, like, so what was the kind? Yeah. The, the, we we still have a capital projects person. Right, that you person, have one, one but person. But you were going to put two. Two, and it would be more of a team of able to do more work, like the Staples House, the painting. Like they would be going around and doing things as a team. The group that built our pavilion outside, they were part of our capital projects team. So instead of, but we weren't able to fill the second position, so we have one capital projects team. And again, if it's a job that we need two people, again, we have the flexibility that Russ will pull a highway guy or someone to help the person, or the electrician from the treatment plant, or something like that to help us to, the whole idea is to do some of this work internally instead of contracting it out. Makes sense. Yeah. Totally makes sense. I totally agree with the concept. I think the concept works. I think, but like you said, if you had two people, you have a team, you can yeah. kind of accomplish something. Now you have to pull somebody off of a resource right. if they're doing something to partner with that position you have to be able to do, because most jobs are two people, you know, yeah, two persons for right. operations to be most efficient. And, and what we do is uh, we look at and evaluate. So we plan ahead quite a bit. Um, and we'll evaluate who can come because, listen, I can't bring Kathy to help me to do the roof. I can have her come do drainage design for me because she's a drainage expert. I Certified. <laughs> but there are certain people who can do certain tasks, yeah. right? And so we'll, we'll move our uh, program around. We'll work it and ship re, you know, our repair program to based on the needs of who we have available to help out. Um, one thing I'll do, I'll tell you about... Uh, Last year, I worked with Joe. Um, I got excited, uh, as a relatively mild term, about we had to replace fence on the trail. Had to buy 600 feet for, was it $5,000 or something? It, something, it was astronomical, and I, it bothered me. And I talked to Joe. And we, so we spend about $100,000, 40000 a year on tree removal. We pay, our, we pay our, our sub to come in and take trees down. Mm -hmm. And it's bothering me that this fencing, is, and we have, as I said, over 12 miles of trail. We probably have about four miles of fence. Talk with Joe. We had money saved from different capital projects. 
and I talked to him, and it took a while. It took a couple weeks, but he bought in. <laughs> uh, we bought a log mill, a sawmill. Yeah, perfect. So the capital projects guy with our heavy equipment operators have all learned and been taught and trained on the sawmill. So now we're making our own fence. So the trees that we cut down, we're no longer chipping them or having them take them away. So we're saving money there so we can cut more trees down. We'll take the log links and we're making fence posts out of them and fence railing. And we have these four, four guys learned on this sawmill. We got it honed, you know, it's honed in and these things, they're coming up. We can make wood flooring if we need to. Yeah, no, that's great. So, and I told a couple of colleagues, and they, they're like, you did what? <laughs> like, right. But I, we spend a lot of money mm -hmm. on tree removal. Yeah. And it, but it bothered me that on, like, for $5,000 to go 600 feet, it used to be, like, I don't know, 1200 bucks. It was yeah. cheap. Yeah. Now it's so expensive and inflation with it. I'm like, I, we got to save money. Mm -hmm. So I've got wood stockpiled and coming <laughs> yeah. out, and they're, they're cutting like Good. when we have it, you know, rainy day, whatever. They're in there cutting, and we get a lot of wood done. So that we all, like, these four guys are all kind of like that capital projects right. group. When they're not running equipment, they'll be helping each other out along with the electrician at the plant. Mm -hmm. We are one of our building officials. Uh, the assistant is a an electrician. He's a E1, mm -hmm. um, so he's helped me out with a couple things, the problems that we had to look at, and with the high school and stuff. Um, so everybody's kind of learning that we all do a lot of things and have we all bring a different skill set Right, and I think that's where I'm driving. I think that we are so fortunate to have that and I think the idea of embracing self-performance I think what you're talking about whether it's be you know setting catch basins and doing the the kind of infrastructure work They have to anticipate the paving schedule on and be on target whether it's building fencing I didn't know you're you were milling fencing now, yeah. but but I I think the I think what I would just say to the council at large and and, and everybody is to make sure as as our median price of houses get more expensive, I think we really need to communicate what you do. You know what I mean? I think this high level of service at times can be taken for granted. And I oh, think, I think, it, and I think well, well I think <laughs> I you, think Ross. we know. I think we know it is taken for granted. <laughs> and I think and and so it, it's not even can, it is. And I think, you know, I just want to find ways where we communicate this as strongly as possible because I think people just think things get done. And that just doesn't happen. It's because you're resourceful, your department's resourceful, the staff we have throughout the town hall and the town. I mean, and it's really, and we're, we're always balancing it against the dollars that are available. And I, and I you know, we, we have kudos to everybody that comes in, but it is a message we definitely need to stay on top of because I don't know if everybody knows what you did with the sawmill and what you did. I don't need to know. But I, <laughs> but I, I understand, I, I get that too, but yeah. I think it's these things that I think go a long way in uh, nice. keeping the bottom line. And on that, on that, Dave, is we all got to realize, and everyone here, I think, you, I know you do. Like, do I come, like you said, Amy, it's a needs list. It, yeah. Right. At some point, as Kathy said, it's going to break. And as you've said, and you've all, like, you get it, it's going to break. And when is that breaking point? And, you know, our trucks, our, our snowplow trucks, we have a 1985 dump truck that we use for backfilling curbs. Yeah. And, um, and it, it doesn't have a, uh, what is that plate? The uh, seatbelt? No. no it's, it's, it's a belt. It, and it's actually autumn, it's, it's standard. Uh, oh, antique. The, the antique plate. It doesn't even have an antique plate, oh. right? It's, but that's what we do, and we, we utilize that. But the thing is, it's at what point do you make our budget give it a, every, because it it's, can't be sustainable for one year. Right. right. You're not going to give the town side a 8% budget every year. It's not sustainable. So that's where things, you know, how do you change that? I, and I don't have that answer. Right, and I think, you know, we have, you know, I think I'm hoping in some ways we're in a moment of time like with personnel and things like that. But Russ and I and Jim Russ Basin, we've been talking a lot 
again, just about being able to fill positions, what the budget is and where it's going to break, and you hope part of some of the problem we have now is that we're not able to fill positions too. And so, again, it's sort of a perfect storm in some ways, but we hope that it's kind of a moment of time and then we'll start, we'll be able to have employees. But we've been looking at kind of the overall um, workforce in the highway and grounds department and, and how we do business. Because the other thing too is, is that we do have a situation where, I mean, quality of life is very important for the people that, as everyone is, but it's, it's a changing environment and people like their time off they don't like their overtime they it's a, it's a much different environment and we run our organization that of having low um, amount of employees but we have overtime and some different things and now Russ and I shake our head we're like um, we have all this overtime and no one wants it and it's a, it's a whole different kind of environment and also based on some of the different things with COVID and the requirements of sick time, you have people that are out more and things of that nature. So it's we've been talking about it quite a bit about just the organization and how we function because it's different. It's it's a it's different. Right. So and that was my last thing. I, I figured a lot of people don't sign up for overtime like they once did. That yeah. was my that was gonna be my last point. Yeah, but no. But in, 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 in this operation, you really got to rely on that model. Right. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, your conversations are probably spot on at this point. Yeah, and, and as Joe said before, you know, with not having the, you know, the summer help or the part-time help for leaf pickup <laughs> and snow plowing, I'm pulling guys from the plant you know, for leaf mm -hmm. pickup. Instead of paying you know, $10 an hour, I'm paying them $30 an hour. So that adds to the cost. Again, the guys for ten dollars an hour never showed up, right? <laughs> so it, it, it was that anyway. But there right. was a time where we couldn't we we get fifty applications for four positions for leaf pickup. Right. Now I, we call it temp help, and they don't. Yeah, we'll send you two guys, and they never show. Yeah, they don't show. Yeah, no, I, I figured. I, no, it's definitely uh, it's, it's the challenge. Thing. It's a yeah. big, big, big challenge. But thank you for your answers. Thank oh. you for your presence. Thank you. That was uh, 43 to 54, I think. Yeah, we're going to do a bunch more. Uh, so I make a motion for a tentative approval of pages 43 through 54. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Um, page 26, please. That is the fire marshal's fire marshal's uh, account, and the fire marshal that has a 1.58 percent increase. It's uh, basically flat. Any questions about the fire marshal, Brian? No. Patty? Sarah? No. No. Dee? No. Amy? No. Dave? No. no. T A that. This is thirty six. Page 26. 26. Uh, temp, uh, make a motion for a temporary approval of page 26. Second. Just motion is second. Planning. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Sorry, motion my passes. notes are going backwards. Yeah, so all over. <laughs> 18, page 18 through 20. Planning department. Planning right. department. One of the things, just a big shout out to our planning department. Um, over the last couple of years, it's been really, really busy. And Shannon, who was our assistant town planner and wound up being the t town planner, is really doing a, a really a great job for us and her whole planning staff. And talking about just quickly about how our philosophy about using different people in different ways. And it's a Bruce Sears story is that um, Bruce Sears has been here as long as probably me and Russ, and maybe even, I think he's probably the longer, longer. And he started out as the assistant town engineer. And he went from being the assistant town engineer, then he went to? Um, project engineer. Project engineer. Then he moved over to being the zoning, zoning. zoning enforcement. Mm -hmm. He trained and became our zoning enforcement officer. Then he wound up being a development inspector, I think, for a little bit. Didn't he help do some? Uh, no, he did the, uh, he went to like 
plan it, like helping out. He did everything, uh, engineer plan review. Plan review and things like that. And now he's been trained, and now he's our assistant town planner and works in the planning department. And it's just it's just having a good employee who has a wealth of knowledge, and when we needed different things, when we couldn't fill planning positions and this and that, he moved over and helped in the planning department and, and just – Again, going to your point, Dave, just we just move people around if they have the skill set and they can do different things. Yeah, he's flourished. Yeah. He uh, he really does a superb job on plan reviews from you know zoning issues to drainage design and stormwater and uh, water quality volume. It mm -hmm. just he's a big that whole department's a big asset. Mm -hmm. And the way Kathy has she set when she switched everything around and set it up, um, the development wing is a one-stop shop for developers mm -hmm. instead of having to oh got to go to that building and this building and figure out who's where and when they're all right in our office so you have engineering fire marshal building and planning and zoning so all your answers get asked and answered right then mm -hmm. works out well so basically the planning department is flat we've um done some some computer software support has been increased but other than that it's a flat account dave any questions no, I would agree. I, I think the one-stop shop has, you know, I've kind of interfaced with it here and there, and it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty efficient. Amy. Yeah, just I commend you for your efficiencies again. It makes all the difference in the world. At least when you ask for something, we know it's because you need it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Keith. Yeah, uh, I would echo everybody's comments. I mean, from coming from planning and zoning before town council, I – not that I'm encouraging people to email them because they're very busy, but if you email the planning department uh, at almost any time of day, you most likely will get a response back that same day, and it will be the answer to your question. Like, not, I will check in, not I will do this, it will be a direct answer to your question. They're very good. So, no, nothing else. Sarah. I don't have any questions. Patty. No questions. Brian. Yeah, all set. You guys are good. Thanks for helping me. All right, let's TA that section. More, more in the budget now? <laughs> Tempor so uh, make a motion, uh, Brian. Don't, don't answer, that, Brian. Don't, uh, temporary approval for page uh, 18. Second. Motion is second. Discussion. All in be favor? 18 to 20. Sorry. 18, temporary approval. I was going to say 18 to 20. Yeah. Yeah. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Yeah. And the last one, um, 42. Or the second to last one, 42. This is the building inspector. We kind of talked about that a little bit where um, you can see in the on the, the narrative page that we went from 1.5 to 2.5. Mm -hmm. right, yes, we did cover that for a little bit. Any questions, Brian? I uh, know. Patty? No. Sarah? No. Keith? No, sir. Amy? No. Dave? No. Make a motion for a temporary approval of page 42. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Joe, Russian do you passes. want to do the garbage now? Yeah. Um, I just want Russ to come back at 10 o'clock. <laughs> 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 no. like um, what you see, but I'll be here. We have cookies. I wasn't sure if Russ did the garbage, usually. Uh, page, the brown tap, 69 He said he picks the garbage up in the, tap, in the trail. <laughs> <laughs> the budget from uh, 69 to 71. Joe, maybe you can work, walk them through the budget. Sure. Um, first page is a summary page. Basically, this is a special revenue fund. And what that means is, and you'll hear more about this in a couple of weeks from the auditors, um, the revenues have to match the expenditures in, in this type of new operation. It's basically a self-sustaining operation. Mm -hmm. The fees we charge have to cover the, the cost of, the, of what we do. So it's broken down into three units, landfill, collection, and disposal that you're on trash. And the hazardous ways. Um, Russ could probably speak to the landfill more than I could. But on page 69, um, this is break down to the expenditures on the landfill. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, on page 70 would be collection and disposal. And then on 71 would be hazardous waste, which Russ also, that's Russ's baby also. I, I'll give him kudos, even though he criticized me before mm -hmm. me, not being quick on, on decision making. <laughs> 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 I said it took you a while to spend the money. You <laughs> came what, you, what you neglected to say is that we ordered this oh, we two ordered years this ago. In April. This, this is how we, we ordered this. I don't know if finds these vendors, but we ordered this in 21. 
right? Yeah. Like April of 21. Yeah. It was delivered, delivered in September of 22? 23. 23. <laughs> 23. <laughs> so, it's like a fire truck, huh? Special made? Oh, it was awful. They're not as, as efficient. <laughs> no, I, I the hazardous waste in our state, all seriousness, we used to be part of the MDC. You probably heard the story before. We were part of the MDC um, hazardous waste collection. And Russ, working with some other towns in the Farmington Valley, um, they have their own collection uh, program now. And we, we're literally saving about $30,000 a year by doing this. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a big savings to the town. And it's very, very popular. I think we're the number one user of, of all of, three of, collections. Yeah. It's, quite <laughs> it's quite an event. It's quite an event. I had a one question on landfill. If I mean, but I you guys ready for questions? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Dave. I was just our leaf composting at Quarry Road. Do we do we just use do we is that what's down at Tunxis Mead as compost and so forth, or are we oh. or is oh, we have please. a vendor coming and picking up buying some of it? I know some towns compost and then you know they sell it. You know what I mean? So we compost uh, at both locations, and when we need it from Quarry Road, we supplement the meat Tunxis Mead. Okay. Um, so we compost all our leaf, right. not all, but we bring some to Dunning because it's more efficient for our operation. Um, but we keep the amount of leaves that we go through on an average of, I'm not even gonna try and make up a number to you if it's you know, 5,000 yards of compost that we put in the bin every year. It, it depends on the year. Yep. Um, but we compost all of our thing, put it down there. Uh, the landfill, you'll see the number in here for the contractual services. We just, wasn't it last night or Tuesday night? We approved a bid for 53,000. So we'll come and the tr parts of the trees that we can't use, you know, the big butts are, they're twi too twisted and we stockpile them and put them down and they come and they'll grind them all up. We'll grind our brush up. Um, we used to have a tub grinder, but it became so expensive to maintain. It wasn't worth it. And this is a lot cheaper. Um, and we, we didn't, as I said the other night, we didn't do it last year. Um, we got enough and put going through this year. Um, and part of this also in the landfill is we have to monitor the landfill every year. Mm -hmm. And we do that. We've been fortunate. We were doing it four times a year. Um, I can't remember. <coughs> my years are growing on me. When did we do the water main? About 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. So we, the tungsten meat used to be fed on a well. And about 10 years ago, we did a project to extend the water main. Uh, from Red Oak Hill and uh, got rid of the well. Mm -hmm. And that in turn got rid of, uh, as part of our testing program, we were able to reduce our testing to twice a year. And then finally, about two or three years ago, we got it down to every nine months. So when everything's status quo, it's nothing's crazy, nothing's moving, we're in a good spot. Um, so we're doing it every nine months, which in turn saves us money. Mm -hmm. So that comes out of this account as well. Got it. Amy. I have no questions. Keith. Um, on the um, page 71 with the, the hazardous waste collection, so I see that that part included in that is the electronics recycling and then personal document shredded events. Correct. Those, like the, those are extremely popular, right? Right. So, and we do, what do we do, two times a year? On three. Th three. We do one so here and two in Simsbury. One here, okay. Okay, and so those are all in production. And so the 40,000, that, is that a vendor that, that runs those? Yes. Okay. So what that pays for uh, our fees we don't charge our residents this yeah. comes out of here and that um that covers the cost the average cost of all our town residents to go and do that and pay we pays for the shredding as well yeah. and then what we do is we have five towns within it, our little consortium and we all share the you know it's based on a number of uh people visitors who drop off yeah and as joe said we are for the most part farmington is the biggest drop off, except oh, I, for maybe one event a year this, at Sinsbury. This, this is not a complaint. I, no. I had a car full of like old laptops, and I pulled up and I saw Town Hall. I was like, I'll see you next year, man. I just pulled it. It was, <laughs> it was so busy there. I mean, it was efficient too. You could see the cars working around. I just didn't have the time that day, but it's really a, a very, it's a huge value to the community because people want to have a safe way to get rid of their stuff. Right, and it handles it. And so we work with the uh, football pro, football team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were all yeah, there. Come, yep. and it's. Uh, the electronics place that will come and the football team comes and they you know, ask for donations. They carry the things out of your cars. No, that was it was uh, great. It's really yeah. good. It works out well. It's a, it's it's a turn into a community. Yeah, event. it's a community event. <laughs> right. It's a community event. Yeah. Thank you. Cooper is there working it. He should got a little side money. <laughs> Sarah. I don't have any questions. Okay. Patty. 
Uh, yeah, I just have a question. It's the narrative associated with page 70. It says the town doesn't pay a fee for the disposal of clean recyclables. I know that a lot of times recyclables aren't clean. Do, are we getting, is, I guess my question is, is someone looking to see if our recyclables are clean? Or is it just, like, what's the meaning? The, the contractor that who, where we dispose of our, or takes our recyclables from us, they actually monitor and they determine what percentage is clean or not clean. If we go over a certain <coughs> percentage, then we have to pay for that load. They do it load by load. And, and you never think Thank about it, but um, most loads usually have about a half a percent of, of unclean recyclables in them. Uh, in, in Farmington, we noticed a pattern this past year that there's, whenever there's a, a holiday, like 4th of July, Memorial Day, and Labor Day, where you have a big picnic, we, we spike up over 10%. Um, so we, we tend to get loads. So we do have some, we do have to pay in those months for uh, dirty recyclables. Thank you. Nothing else. <laughs> we'll make it. You know that is people just hanging the garbage bag and saying, you know, pick a thing and yeah. we're just paying attention. Brian. Yeah, no additional questions, but I'm going to clean my bottles after the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> those rest of it's just, I'm mean, getting a lot of kudos here from me. <laughs> um, the whole world has gone one crazy. Of things, one of the things you always say, <laughs> you see a lot, and I see this at home too. A lot of people think, well, your paper plate that you just ate had food on it is, is recyclable. But that's actually a dirty recyclable because it had food on it. It's contaminated. It's got grease on it. It's no use to the recycling company. So you might as well just put that in your trash. Hmm. So um, the pizza boxes are the same way. I thought they just reversed pizza boxes. Only clean pizza boxes, Keith. They did reverse it, so they'll take them, but they still have to be clean. Who has a clean pizza box? That I, I, that's what I think they should have just said, take them out, because nobody has a clean pizza box. Yeah. And if it gets too confusing, it's going to end up in the recycling and not be clean. Uh, make a motion for a tentative approval for pages 69 to 71. Just, um, one last thing before you do, just to let you know, the fee is going to stay the same. It's 268 yep. a year. It will stay the same. It's not going to change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Done. Yes. Second. Motion second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Hi. Thank you. Thank you, Russ. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you, Russ. Nice yeah. Thank you, Russ. Pleasure. Yeah. I know, exactly. Well, Russ, thank you very much. Statement. No, thank yes. you. If we give you more compliments, you won't be able to get out of the door. Oh, trust me. We have to call one of those guys in here to make have it work. to get a project manager in the green. Exactly. <laughs> thank you. But now we know that the town manager has her, you know, her drain permit, so. <laughs> Certified <laughs> drain agent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nancy. Nancy. Jeff. All right. So let's see if we can do the pages correctly this time. So I texted Lori, but I unfortunately she okay. had made it home because we were supposed to be later. <laughs> That's 55 through 65. All right. So the next section is pages 55 through 65. Everyone, I think, knows Nancy Perrin and uh, Jeff Porter's on our recreation. Mm -hmm. yep. And Lori Wichita was, she had made it home, so I told her not to come back. Okay. But she would have. <laughs> All right. So community and recreation, their budget has gone down 0.63%. Um, it's very, very uh, flat. I think the one thing that we wanted to talk about is that this budget includes a half a year funding for a recreation director in accordance with the town strategic plan. We've also shifted funds from the community recreation operating budget to the recreation fund to offset some of that cost. And the recreation fund is a enterprise uh, fund that's paid by fees. So maybe we can go to that page and we can talk a little bit about it. Rec fund, oh, yeah. That's Oh, the red or the rest, yeah, I think just the rec fund. Page 62. Page. Um, which page? 62. 62. Thank you. You're welcome. All 
So you can see here where we had um, recreation director, current, you had zero. Now we have one. Recreation supervisor, two, the current, 0.5, and it's proposed to be zero. And that zero, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, that's going to the rec fund. Yes. If you go to page uh, 78, page 78, you see that corresponding change. You see recreation supervisor, 0.5, and the proposed. Page 78 on that side. On the number page, you'll look. So we're, what we're doing is, is that we're having, we're adding a, a recreation director, a new position, but for half a year. That would, so we'd start paying after half a year. And we're moving the recreation supervisor into the rec fund. And so the rec fund we think can support now, instead of uh, 1.5 positions, we think it can support two positions. Yeah. Okay. Brian, any questions? Uh, I do not. Thank you for everything you do for the town. And the fact that you generate so much income to cover all of these things is pretty amazing. So thanks for making programs that everyone uses and pays for. And one of the things we talked about, I think, when we had talked about the strategic plan with Jeff and Nancy, that you know the idea now is is that recreation is going to be broken out from uh, community, and so Nancy and her staff can spend more time on the social services and community. And Nancy, you weren't at the meeting, but we talked about is that her area is just really growing quite a bit, and so is the recreation area is growing quite a bit. So really, we think it's time, and um, even though we think it has worked out well, it's time that they each kind of are a standalone division. And so next year's budget, if everything goes well, we'd have you know its own recreation, and it would be separate yeah. from Nancy. And Nancy can uh, focus on some of the other things, um, because social services and community and things Between of that fair, nature. Fair rents and oh, yeah. the, housing the ADA, must get crazy. housing, um, the DEI, all those things have really taken off. And I'm passionate about those things, so I'm excited to kind of put some good energy into those things and really work on them well. Bye-bye pickleball, hello. No, well, I'll still, pickleball is the senior, so we'll still be working with the seniors in a lot of their services, so. And as we discussed on the recreation side with Jeff, which are growing programs, is that, you know, our new 1928 town hall has the new recreation space, our pickleball courts and different things, and uh, we think that it's, you know, time to have two separate entities. And it, I think this way, we're hopeful that, um, you know, with the one full-time recreation director in the operating budget being able to push the other into the rec fund, we could support it, and it's not too costly for the town. All right. Dave, any questions? No, I think I th the only question I have is, I guess, if the 1928 building continues to go on schedule and so forth, I mean, that's going to give us a recreational opportunity up there too, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that'll be something that will be integrated with this new director and so forth. So. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Amy. No, it makes a lot of sense. Thank you for everything you do. Keith. No questions, thank you both. Sarah. No questions, thanks. Patty. Uh, yeah, a question. If we're moving the supervisor into the rec fund, is that gonna change any of the, have any impact on the fees for um, users? Who are participating in the recreational activities? I don't think it would have an, that. We're the adding the person is not going to impact the fees, but they always look at the fees. So fees could potentially be going up, but it would not be because we're putting the rec director in there or the rec supervisor in there. Okay. And the narrative said it's for next year. Is this, in, but is this intended to be a permanent change into the rec fund? For yes. this person to be funded yep. there? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Brian. You started with me. I did. <laughs> yeah, you went Brian, Dave. Yeah. Oh, I did. Blood, blood sugar. But thank man, you for coming. Drop the sugar straps. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I get that. It's like watching tennis. Here I am. Pickleball. Pickleball. Pickleball yeah. Well, thank you both. You're very welcome. Jeff, thank you for all the work you do. You know, I know you run the summer program. You hire a lot of kids. You run all the the programs for them. So. I know your task is going to get greater as the school comes to an end. And Nancy, again, you know, wearing both hats, doing everything you do, so it's much appreciated. Mm 
We still got a couple of counts for you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll TA. TA, what, uh, 55 to 65? Yes. Uh, make a motion for a tentative approval for pages 55 to 65. Second. Motion and second. Discussion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Um, now, if you go to the red tab um, in the back, that's the rec fund, 72 through 80. Yeah. And if you can see on the front cover page, you can see at the beginning is the revenues for the different uh, objects of sports, cultural, bus trips, rec camps, senior programs, and other interests. And we have a budget of uh, for revenues of 1,355,248. And then you have your appropriations on the bottom for each one of these accounts um, for it, a balanced budget. And then you have the backup. And again, this is our rec fund where it's service fees and that's what, it's not from taxpayer dollars. Got it. All right, so I get the order straight this time. <laughs> Keith. No questions. Amy. No questions. Dave. No questions. Brian. I am good, thank you. Patty. Um, yeah, on the summary page, the there's a, the department request was 921, and the increase by the town manager was about 400,000. I was just curious. I told the six. Yeah, you, this the one that was six, uh, Patty. I didn't hear you, Kathy. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Which one are you uh, asking about? I'm sorry. I I'm looking. It. I'm looking at the summary page yep. overall, and just and I oh. guess it's actually the sports physical is probably where it's coming from. Right. Sports and physical activities. I'm just saying that it's about a the difference between the department request and the town manager proposal is about four hundred thousand so dollars. I'm just curious as to what that difference is. Joe. Basically what that is, is the department uses a different methodology for budgeting than what, what I use or for budgeting or what I convinced Kathy use for budgeting. Um, they use a longer perspective and they look at averages, longer term averages. And you know, since COVID and since the pandemic, a lot of that's changed. And, and really in the past three or four years, this, all the recreation has grown tremendously. And just looking at the numbers, look at the actual for 22, 23, we're at 1.3 million in revenue taken in, 1.2 million in expenditures. This year, the projection is 1.3 taken in, in revenue, 1.6, I'm sorry, 1.2 in expenditures. Uh, they've already reached one, over a million dollars in revenue for this current fiscal year. So um, it was more aggressive in coming up with the manager's budget reflecting more what's been happening in the past four years as opposed to a longer term view. It, it's, uh, in my mind, it's a more realistic view as, as to what's going to be taking place. What the actual what's revenue. Actual, yeah. right, what's actually what? taking place. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. And Brian. I am good. Thank you. All right. So that's uh, 72 through 80. Mm -hmm. uh, make a motion for a tentative approval for pages 72 through 80. Second. Motion and second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the next one is the Westwoods, which is the blue tab, which is 81 through 84. And again, on the, the cover page here, you see the revenues at the beginning with green fees, season tickets, golf cart rentals, driving range, and for a total revenue of 761900 and then the appropriations on the bottom is the clubhouse restaurant practice for $761,900. And if you remember, too, on the capital, we are doing, going to be doing some work at the clubhouse. Uh, Nancy and uh, they, I think the restaurant person is coming back for after a slow start of some problems, and I think people are pleased with the, the, the restaurant, and I think we've been trying each year to maybe do something new, and we're excited about the Splash Park, and um, that hopefully with the restaurant, they could uh, maybe do ice cream or do different things and have a nice, better patio out in the back and some different things to upgrade that. But golf course is doing well. It's doing very well. Yeah, doing well. Yeah, it's doing very well. It has a very nice niche of people that like to go. Is there any questions? 
Patty, any questions? No. Brian? I'm good. I can't wait to go out and play golf again. <laughs> I know. With all the sunshine, everybody is chomping at the bit. <laughs> Keith? No questions. Amy? No questions. Dave? I'm fine. Yeah. All right. We take TA. Uh, make a motion for a tentative approval for pages 84, or sorry, 81 through 84. Excuse me. Second. Okay. Motion and second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. So, Joe, if I think it'd probably be a good time now the, to yeah, break for dinner, and then just to so tell you where we're at. Um, did oh, I miss? oh, I'm sorry. One more. Yeah. One more. I'm sorry. Uh, What's teased. the number? I think there's no change in it whatsoever. So, um, where are the buildings? 22. Page 22. Thanks, Joe. That's uh, Nancy's next door, the Staples house. And, and there's really no change in that budget. Any questions, Keith? No, sir. Amy? Good. Dave? I'm good. Sarah? All set. Patty? I'm good. And Brian? Good to go. Thank you. Make a motion for a tentative approval for page 22. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, guys. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah. So I think if we uh, break, take a break, and then we come back and we just have the general government group of accounts, which is a small group of accounts, and then from there we can talk about uh, debt service and non-tax revenues and maybe to talk about the capital and uh, then we'd be ready to go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Thanks. Well, it'll be how long for Patty so we know when they bring oh. her back. What do you, what do you say? 15, 15 minutes? 15 minutes, so? Patty? Okay. 15. okay thank That's you. Good. Yep. All right, we're back. Patty, are you still with us? Yeah. Excellent. All right, we're going to start off at what, page six, correct? Uh, nope, we're going to do general administration one through 25. Wow. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. you Oh, you're right, Catherine. You're right. <laughs> I did ask for Brian's. And yeah, so these are the uh, general administration group of accounts. Um, and the overall increase is 4.05. This is where the salary account reserve is in. Um, just a couple of things that we talked about. Obviously, the registrar of voters is in this account. There was some increases in that. Um, we did, we have, Knockwood, been doing pretty well with our legal account, so that has been um, reduced. This is where, in this group of accounts, even though you have um, approved it already, this is where the library is. It's our, just all our um, administrative accounts in here. Um, Brian is here just in case there was any questions on the, the technology part um, of the budget. One of the things, Brian, I've noticed uh, <laughs> a couple of times now, it's in the capital, but it will be good, I think, to do this council chamber, some of the yeah. technology. Yeah. That, Especially that. Yeah. Or less. What? <laughs> less. <laughs> so I don't know if you have any questions on pages 1 through 25. Give me a second to sort of start looking through, make sure my notes. If anybody does have any questions, jump on in. I do have a question on page six if you want. To sure, Brian, I'm ready. about the office supplies. Uh, Request. It seemed like we needed a lot and it went down to 10,000. Is there something that we're not getting or something that we're. I'm sorry, what page are you on, Brian? Page, page six. Oh, page six. Yeah. Um. There's some confusion uh, between office supplies and contractual services. Oh, okay. What I'm trying to do is uh, a lot of departments in the town, a lot of the personnel <coughs> departments have certain accounts that they'd like to charge everything to. And so we're trying to retrain them as to what accounts things should go to. And so what happens here is they were paying for a lot of stuff out of office supplies that technically is what we would consider a contractual service. 
printing and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I moved there in order to, you know, it's like positive, you know, it's like you know, it's to reinforce <laughs> that they shouldn't do that. We just move the money around to where it's, it should be so that they charge it to the right account. Put it where it belongs. Yeah, I'm just making sure that we weren't not getting something that might have no, been needed. That's all. No, because if you look at um, office supplies, the we're going to get a bunch of in a different account. <laughs> yeah. You know, okay. The estimate's 8,300, but if you look at contractual services, the estimate's 30, almost 34 thousand dollars. So basically, we just flop the money <coughs> around. Ah, oh, okay. It's kind of like the chief moving the people around in his department. Gotcha. Okay, I'm not playing chess with you guys. I see what you do for strategy. <laughs> yeah. Patty, any questions? No. Sarah? No. Keith? No, thank you. Amy? Can't find any. Dave? I'm, I'm all set. And just on page 11, the 235, that's for the obviously salary reserve account for that yeah that's for on schedule? for non-union I mean not, I'm sorry non-settled contracts that's where the right. lump sum of money goes right go. yeah perfect all right so since there's no more questions uh, I make a motion for a temporary approval of pages 1 through 25 um, second motion a second all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed motion passes Good. thank you Brian thank wow you. Oh, easy pizza. <laughs> yeah. Came for the pizza. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Take care, Brian. All right. So we've run through all the the accounts. <clears throat> then, oh, do, or did, oh, benefits. I'm sorry. Why did you get that one, Joe? Thank you. Blue tap. Mm -hmm. Benefits and other. <clears throat> uh, page uh, 66. Uh, 67. Overall, it's increasing just over 4%. Big drivers here are the pension contribution and the health insurance contribution. Both of those have is where most of the increase is. The pension contribution actually funds two different pensions. It's the defined benefit plan, which um, was frozen back in 2012, and then we have the defined contribution plan for anybody hired after 2012. <coughs> So there's contributions made to both uh, of those uh, pension plans. And then the health insurance, that's a combination of our contribution to the self-insurance fund. You heard a lot about that last night. And also um, paying our consultant and paying um, the employees who take health, health insurance waivers. Joe, for the heart and hypertension, that's going to zero out eventually as everybody retires out. That's under that. Um, or does he have to hold on to it for after they retire out? The bulk of that payment is to one person. Okay. Um, so eventually the, the bulk of that will go away. I don't think it'll ever owe. I don't, well, let's put it this way. It's probably, it will go away, but it's probably not in, in our lifetime. Okay. Okay, there's enough claims out there or potential claims out there mm -hmm. um, from, from uh, former employees that I mean, you can't do it any longer. It's, it's now, it's, now it's workers' comp. Yep. But um, to, prior to the change in the law, there are enough employees out there that you, know, you basically have to go through their lifetime. Got it. Any questions for Joe? Brian? I do not. Patty? No, you're still muted, but I got you. No, I know that it wasn't unmuting, but no, I don't. Thank you. <laughs> Sarah? No, I'm all set. Keith? <clears throat> um, I don't know why it's, I'm escaping the, the terminology, escaping. Joe, we're still paying down um, that eighth of a percent. The, the work that we were doing in the retirement board to, to pay down, you're paying down eighth of a percent a year. Um, in uh, return? Uh, yeah. Joe, so, it's a little complicated. As you may recall, back when probably the second to the last meeting that we had, um, you were still chair, um, we asked the actuary to do a study of the assumptions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she finally did a study of <coughs> that will be presented this coming Tuesday at the pension board meeting. But basically, one of her assumptions is that that rate of return, where it is now, which is at 6.625%, yeah. is where it should be. Okay. So the record, so that having, 
having the draft report and having the, the knowledge that you know she's recommended to not be changed, I left it in the contribution level here. I did not change it. Okay. Otherwise, we'd have to add more money than what we're already adding to this. So that was where, I, yeah. Okay, that's where I wanted. I know it was just something I remember being highlighted by um, by Joan and some of the other members of the of the board um, a couple of years ago. But if they're they're saying that that's where it should be, then I trust them. Yeah, I think you know, and that's that that's a philosophical decision of the board. But right now, everything science, everything numerically says we should be where we are. We should not change it. Okay. I think there's a philosophy on the board that they want to go further than than six point six two five. Oh yeah. So that'll be something the board will have to figure out. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amy. No questions. Dave. No, I'm fine. All right. So the yeah, sorry, I keep forgetting. Page 66 and 67. Uh, make a motion for a temporary approval of pages 68 and 67. Second. Motion is second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 One Vote. correction. I think I said 68 and 67. Yeah. 66 and 67. Yeah. Sorry. No problem. Motion passes. Is it debt now, Joe? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Debt. Debt service, which would be page uh, 68, please. And Joe will go through that for you. Yeah, I think. Uh, hey, Joe, before you start, could you move the microphone closer to where you? Thank you. Um, I actually want to hand something out that doesn't have anything to do with number what we're going to talk about, but it does have something that we're talking about. That's an oxymoron. Get an <laughs> These are the pertinent pages of the last debt issuance we did. And the reason why I'm handing them out is the debt policy says that I'm supposed to do all these metrics once a year, at least once a year. And I just want to show everybody that I do do these metrics sometimes more than once a year. So what I did is, this is the official statement. We prepare this for every single debt issue we do, okay? Um, it basically is a story of the town, and it's basically the story of the town in numbers. So back in January, we sold $28 million in general obligation um, bond anticipation notes. The $28 million is for the high school project, mm -hmm. entirely for the high school project. So what I did is, and if you want the full OS or official statement, I'm more than happy to uh, send it to you electronically. But I pulled out the section that talks about debt. And this is basically the history of debt in, in the town of Farmington. Um, the first page shows you what's out there, what was issued, what's outstanding, and when it finally matures. Um, then it goes on to um, tell you about some of the other debt that we have in addition to the uh, bonded debt. Then you can see a debt maturity schedule. <clears throat> and, and how quickly the debt's going to retire over the, over the next um, 20 years. And then there's some metrics that, um, according to the debt policy, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to do every year. So just to let you know that we do those metrics, and they are in our official statement. Mm -hmm. And this is basically the information that the rating agencies use, part of this. They use this entire document, which is actually 150 pages, to determine our rating each year. But I thought I would hand that out so you could see where we are with debt. Um, at, and that's as of January. Obviously, things change every month. We do pay down debt every month, so um, it does change. But that's basically a snapshot of debt as of January 9th of, or actually, it's January 23rd of, um, of this year. So getting back to the budget, the, what we're budget for next year, obviously, is, is the debt payments for everything that's been issued. And they, we have um, the lease financing. We do have uh, two leases left. One, one will actually pay off next October. Um, we'll have another lease that will go for quite, uh, quite some, continue for quite a while. Um, and then we have the uh, bond interest and the bond principal, and that's on the existing debt. In the bond interest uh, payment for next year is included amount, an amount for an issue that we're going to do in August. We're going to do an issue. The, the, those $28 million in bands, we're going to re, we're going to permanently finance them in August of this year. Mm -hmm. um, probably, actually, we might do $28,600,000. Um, 
but we're going to do 28 million, at least 28 million dollars, and that will all be the um, that will all be the uh, high school project. I may put a couple of other projects in there to bring it up a little bit, but I did put in principals paid twice a year, so I did put in one principal payment for the year. The way it, the way it was scheduled, I'm sorry. There's two interest payments each year. I misspoke. There's two interest payments each year. There will not be a principal payment next year. You will see it the following year, though. So the following year's budget will see a, 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 a substantial increase also because there will be another principal payment added to that in 25-26. But there will be one interest payment next year, um, and it is uh, included in this budget. Um, and that's pretty much the debt story for right now. We have issued close to, what, 90, almost $94 million on the high school project at this point. We anticipate that there will be one more bond issue, probably in the neighborhood of 10 to $12 million for that project. I'm hoping to push that out to the 25, 26 fiscal year, so it would actually give you an extra year before you'd have to start making payment on it. But the plan right now is to um, do one issue of 20, between 28 and $29 million in August of this year. Um, and then start paying it off in the, in the following fiscal year. What is in here that's causing the increase is the payment for the um, principal payment on the 23 bond issue that we did. That was a $30 million issue, and that added $1.5 million in principal payments and uh, 620000 in interest payments to next year's budget. So if there's any questions on it, I'd be happy to answer them. Brian, anything? Uh, just curious, what, what are we adding to that $28 million bond you were talking about? Uh, we have the $28 million, the $28 million your total would be um, high school. Yeah. What I'm thinking of at this point is we've been, we have an aggressive road program, as you heard earlier, and we're financing that through debt, through debt issuance. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to see where we are with that <coughs> program and how much we've spent so far. I have a... Yeah. According to uh, tax laws, and federal tax laws, I have, I could advance funds from, uh, to pay um, for those expenses, but I have to reimburse where we borrowed the money from after 18 months. So last year we did, we did about five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars in, 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 we advanced about six hundred thousand dollars to the bond paving program. So I have to reimburse the town for that. So I'm going to probably add that to the. Um, to the $28 million, but I also may add some, some additional things. Um, you guys just authorized a $600,000 land purchase, which that'll be paid for through a bond, so that'll actually get it, probably more than likely get added to, this, to that $28 million. So again, uh, it's just before, probably in July, I'll look at what we need to do. I, it, it's, the base will be $28 million. It may go as high as $30 million. So. Yeah, what are the rates looking like these days? Actually, the rates during January dropped dramatic, dropped significantly, not dramatically, significantly, and it was looking pretty good. And then inflation ticked up again and the rates went back up again. Um, the hope is that when we did this, the, the thought was that, and, and it still is the thought, that the Fed will cut rates probably in June. I was hoping for March, June, and July, but it looks like June they'll cut rates and that'll help us to get a rate. But we're probably looking Right now, pro my guess would be we're, we're probably looking at a little, maybe on, a little under 3.1. So our last one was um, 3. Point, yeah. Last one was 3.27. That was in 2023. I'm I'm thinking maybe 3. Point, you know, 3.05, 3.08 mm -hmm. in that that range um, at this point. So depends on who's out there and, and, and what the market's doing and how, how aggressively the Fed cuts rates. Good luck. <laughs> to all of us. <laughs> Patty. No questions. <clears throat> Sarah. No questions. Keith. Uh, no questions. I don't know if it's an appropriate time, but everybody else got their plaudits mm -hmm. uh, before. I think Joe deserves them as well. Um, with everything that he puts together with when he's issuing debt for these projects. I remember his projections from January that he had done a year in advance were like spot on. So as part of that team with Russ and everybody else, I mean, one of the reasons that we're able to keep a town running with minimal budget increases is because we have good financial planning. So thank you. Thank you. Amy. No questions. Dave. 
I'm all set. Well, I would definitely echo Keith's statement. You know, you do a fine job, and it is pretty incredible to look at something and you say, write this number on the top of your piece of paper. We're going to come back to it. And oh, yeah, I said that last year. Have a good day. <laughs> but I have, and I actually, um, I, I thank you, but I, I actually have to say, and I, this is probably a plug for Bond Council because I know you guys are thinking about Bond Council, but um, I have a pretty good team of consultants that I work with, and while they don't make the decisions, they do offer very good advice. And Bond Council and, and fiscal advisor, um, we, we put, when we knew we were going into this, I put together a team that I thought would you know, really work well for the town, and, it, and it's actually proven to be very good. It's, it's worked out very well for us. So. It has, and thank them. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so this is going to be a TA for 68. Uh, I'd like to make a motion for a tentative approval for page 68. Second. Motion second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. So it's the front page now? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, general fund revenue. So I think that's, they don't have page numbers on it, but we'll just call it the general fund revenue. All right, so this page after the summary tab? Uh, right at the beginning, after the red tab. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want me to go through it, or if you just want to ask, answer, uh, ask questions, but. And if, if you, yeah, it, and if you remember, it matches with the front page of the, the tax and budget worksheet. So the tax and budget worksheet is the revenue side right there, other property taxes, license, and permits. That's what this page is here. It's broken down, and you can see the different things, property taxes, license, permits, fines, and penalties, interest, the federal grants. I think the couple of things to just note is that we did do uh, quite well with our federal and state grants. Um, there's a... Quite, um, quite a bit of an increase there. Um, our interest, you know, interest rates obviously are up, a, and so we are doing well um, with the interest. Um, this is where the um, fund equity, if you remember, I did put in $850,000 for um, the fund balance. That's where this number comes from. Joe, can you just, what was the fund balance at again? Do you have the number? It's a little over 17. A little over 17. Yeah. 17 percent of the operating budget. 17 percent of the operating budget, and then I think it's. Um, I might have been scolded for saying this last time, but it's we want 15 or above, right? Is that right? Right. You 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 want 15 or above. 15. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 15 and above. I'm sorry. Yeah. And I would just remind you that it's um, it's 17 percent of the current year's budget. It's not 17 percent of whatever you settle on as you know for next year's budget. So the larger next year's budget gets, the smaller the percentage gets. Understood. <clears throat> Any questions, Dave? No. no. Amy? Mm -hmm. Keith? No questions. Sarah? No questions. Patty? Um, Joe, I'm just curious about the, your projections. Um, they, they just, <clears throat> I, I think you do a great job, as Keith said. Um, I just noticed over the past, other than 2019-2020, um, we've consistently had over, since around 2017, had over about a million dollars more than what's been projected. So I'm just curious about what you, how you do your projections and what you base them on. Well, it, it, it depends on the revenue source as to what the, how, we, how I do the projection. So to give you an example, current taxes would be, obviously it's, you know, it's the levy time, it's the um, grandless times the, the mill rate, less the collection percentage gives you, the, gives you your levy, so, or, or what you think you're gonna collect. So it's, the, but there's a couple of other factors in there that we always have to work with. What's not included in the um, numbers that you get in the grand list or, or from the tax collector are, there are elderly abatements and we do those every year, and, and that's that's a wild card number. Um, and then there's also far, volunteer firefighter abatements, which aren't factored in there by anybody, which I have to factor in. And then something that's been relatively minor in the past, which which has grown in the past uh, five to six years, is um, assessors' uh, corrections during the year. And assessors' corrections could be anything from bad information on motor vehicles. Uh, for example, one year we received. Um, 
on, on our motor vehicle list. We get our motor vehicle list um, from the state of Connecticut, DMV department. Uh, one year they sent us all the buses for all Saybrook. So during the year when all Saybrook got their, uh, the, the bus company all Saybrook got their tax bill from us, they said our, our buses aren't in your town and we, and we had to take like $100,000 off the grand le off the tax levy. So there's assessor's corrections like that and there's also the assessor's corrections based on the settlements we have with all of our tax appeals based on reval. Um, I've mentioned in the past to the council that the, um, we just settled the last case from the 2017 reval. We had 47 cases on, the, on, this 20, on this 2017 reval. We settled the last one last year. One of the problems with that is, you know, you always gonna split, if they win or if they, even if you split the assessment, it's tax revenue loss and you have to make that up. So that has to be factored in also. So there's a variety of variables when you're doing that projection. Um, one of the, another big category is the state and federal grants in, in looking at federal, uh, state and federal grants. We take our numbers from the state. Um, the state gives us the numbers when the governor pre presents his budget or when the legislature's, um, after the legislature uh, settles the budget, we get from the state, the, these are the numbers we're giving you next year. The problem with that is um, they're, they're formula numbers and they don't necessarily run the formulas. There was one year where the, the, the legislature actually said, these are the numbers you are getting. We don't care about the formulas. This is what you're actually getting. And that was an easy year because that's what we got. That they said it and we got it. But, but most of these grants that you see here are formula grants. But, and, and Joe, excuse me, that at one of the things Patty just mentioned, but over the last couple of years, haven't we gotten um, revenue grants from the state that we didn't expect that we were going right, to get? Right, I was get. just gonna say yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so, so some of these grants, um, you know, they tell you a number and then you get a different amount and it's based on the formula that they used at, at when they, so some of, sometimes their formulas left. For, give you an example that that pilot um, tier, that was the three seven that we're, we budgeted for this year was the number they gave us. And when it actually came in, it came in at four point, uh, almost $4.2 million. So, um, you know, and then if you look at the municipal revenue sharing grant, they actually renamed it and, and, and divided it up, but they gave us, um, 129,000, we budgeted 504, they gave us 129,000, but then they gave us a new grant for 545,000. So there, sometimes you can't really trust what, I don't wanna say you can't trust what the state gives you, but sometimes you just don't know what the state's gonna give you. Um, the equalized cost sharing grant is another one where um, they, they give you a number, but what they don't tell you is that during the year, any adjustments they make to state it to your edge, any adjustments they make to your special ed grant, excess cost grant, they take it out of your ECS grant. So you may get, uh, they may tell you you're going to get $1.1 uh, million and then reduce it by whatever audit adjustments they make to your special ed grant, or they may not make it and, or they, you know, for whatever reason, that they run the formula and give you a higher amount. So we try to be conservative with those. Um, but most of these are, Really, what we look at is experience, and we look at what what are known quantities. Um, one of the um, interest income is is an interesting one. If you think about three years ago, we got a, less than one hundred twenty five thousand dollars in interest income. Then the rates shot up, and the banks, even though they're not lending you money, they they want your money, and, and they're they're being very aggressive about about money right now. And we've also been very fortunate because we have a lot of cash right now. Um, we have cash from the high school project, we have, we have, we're sitting on $7 million in ARPA money right now, which is, we're gonna spend next year to renovate the um, 1928. 1928 building. That's generating about $480,000 in, in interest income right now, because we haven't invested, okay? So that's, that's a, a plus for us um, at this point, and that's what's driving this year's number of, up over the $2 million mark, but that money will be gone next year. Um, also next year, we're going to become net borrowers again in terms of the general fund, as I mentioned before, we're not going to, we're not going to be as flush with cash. We're not going to go out to the, we're going to try to reduce the, um, the philosophy is going to be to try to reduce the amount that we issue in debt next year. So, which means any capital expenditures that are debt driven, for example, if, if the high school, not the high school, the, um, if the two fire trucks pass, if the, um, HVAC at the police department passes, those are all big ticket numbers. That money, I'm not gonna run out and bond that next year. I would probably bond that 
um, the year after, which means next year we're going to have to borrow that money from the general fund, from fund balance, the, our cash reserve. So that's less money that will be invested <coughs> next year. Uh, the, other, I, the other thinking in, with the interest income is that I'm betting on the debt side that rates are going to get cut and reduced. I mean, that's my philosophy. That's my, so I, I, have to, I can't say on the, on the debt side the, money, you know, the amount we're going to pay on interest is going to be less next year because they're going to reduce rates and then keep the rates high on the, on the interest income side. I have to, they're, they're, it's, it's a one for one here. So you have to look at how much money, how much cash flow you, you think you're going to have next year, how much available reserves you're going to have next year, and then um, what the rates are going to be next year. So that we look at all that when we're just doing that, just doing that one number. Building permits is the same way. We have a baseline for building permits. We know how much building permit, I don't know how much, I, I know based on experience how much revenue the typical, you know, putting air conditioning in a, in a and a house is going to be and stuff like that, what we're going to generate from building permits. What the unknown is, is how much the large projects are going to be. Because you get large projects come along. You know, some, Trump does something, or um, uh, you heard EBM PAPS does something. So uh, you, all of a sudden, like in January of this year, we were, we were trugging along in January of this year, end of January of this year, we got a $250,000 building permit for some commercial building uh, renovation that was going to happen. So. You try to factor one of those in also, um, sometimes you get two of them. You know, when they, you know, the year they built the, uh, the Mormon temple, you know, it was a million dollar building permit. So, and we look at that, you know, I listened to Rose today, just like everybody else listened to Rose. I see what's, what's coming up on, on, you know, what's coming up on the, um, the drawing board, what's out there, what's, what's gonna happen, and, and we, we factor all that in. So, so each revenue account has a different, um, has philosophy. a different philosophy or projection <laughs> to it. So. Thanks, Joe. Um, I have a follow-up question on the taxes. So our annual report said, I think, that we collected 99.7%, but I assume that's after, that's 99.7% of, I, I'm going to say valid taxes, for lack of a better word, but it's after they've been corrected or after the abatements, all the things that would reduce the taxes. Yeah, what we, and what we do on the collection rate, I hear this one all the time, is, is what we do on the collection rate is we actually break it into the three components. So um, I look at how much we collect on real estate tax, I look at how much we collect on per personal property tax, and I look at how much we collect on um, motor vehicle taxes, and I have a running history of it, actually, uh, I think I have a 20 years worth of data. You know what it always averages out to? no matter what you use, 99.6. The problem that we run into is that, obviously, personal property is a big generator of, of and, and that collection rate is usually higher, but it's not high enough to, to get you up to 99.6. So to it, so what one of the fudge factors that I use to recognize the fact that real estate is a, a bigger component of the total grand list, I actually increase the um, collection rate to like either 99 point, 99.67, 99.68. So I take that extra um, portion and that's, that's attributable <laughs> strictly to the real estate taxes. So, um, but, but again, we use, I use 90, uh, this budget here has factored in 99.67%. And the other thing you have to worry about is like you mentioned, when you, what, you know, when you're, was it last year or two years ago? Look at the inner report and know what it's going to tell you. We collected 100% of the taxes. What it's not going to tell you is that the levy that year was less than what we budgeted. Because we had so many corrections from those 47 tax appeals that we settled that year and we had to give back so much money, the levy was actually reduced to below what we had actually budgeted that year for taxes. So. Yeah, she, we, it would look great. We collected 100% of taxes, but it wasn't what we had budgeted. We had budgeted more than that. So you have to factor those in. I have 20, well, I don't, the assessor has 27 tax appeals right now um, that he's going to court on. Those, there's some pretty substantial ones there that we're going to have to adjust, we're going to have to adjust for in the next, you know. My goal, to, my direction to him is, Settle them as soon as you can, because I don't want this to drag out for seven years like we just did with the last one, and I don't want to have to have these big tax bills at the end or these big reimbursements or re refunds at the end. So, my, you know, but 
but you know, in, in fairness to him, he's got to do what's right, and he's got to protect the towns in, in his assessment you know, um, when he where he thinks he's he's got a good assessment. Um, so he has to you know do that. And some of these will carry over for year to year. If you file a lot of these places, if they file a lawsuit against the 2020 grand 2022 grand list, they're going to file that same lawsuit in 2023 and 2024. So that's also going to impact those years. And and the longer they stay out there, the bigger the impact's going to be on the levy. Thank you. I appreciate the, the detailed answer. Thank you. Anybody else? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, just a couple of questions, Joe. Thanks for everything you're doing for making it understandable. That's the even bigger job. Uh, uh, we were talking about when we were talking about projections at the beginning of this project. I was curious about the fact that we're using our fund balance to help take care of things that we needed to, and I'm glad that we had that there, and we're doing it again, which I'm glad we're there to do it. Um, but my question back then was, how do we begin to replenish that? Because it looked like we have some more debt that's gonna come on, not this next spilling cycle, maybe, but the one after that. Uh, we're looking at some fire trucks and some additional things, and I want us to help maintain our Moody's rating, and I know that that's a factor. So how long does it take us to build it up or keep it, you know, where it's, you know, where it needs to be? Um, well, it is where it needs to be, okay? The, the concern isn't so much, it, you know, it, the, the concern is not so much, I guess there's two concerns when you use fund balance. One is, you're right, you want to keep it where you, you want to keep it where you promised you're going to keep it, where yeah, your policy 15, says to right? keep it, and where the credit rating, rating agency said you should keep it. Um, so, yes, you want to do that. And, and the second thing you want to do is you don't want to become so reliant on your fund balance to fund your operations because, like you said, it's not going to be there at some point, and that's going to give you the – that's going to be a hole for you um, that you're going to have to, to make up. Um, so you, you – and, and I always tell people, and I try to explain – or I try to – I try to teach the philosophy of, of – in budgets like this is, is stepping up. and. This is the first time we had to do this, and people, several people alluded to this um, over the past couple of, of nights that back in 2012 or whatever, when we had the, the big crash and we had the reval and everything else, um, you know, we decimated everything, and, and, and we didn't get it all back in one year. We got it back over time, okay? And it's unfortunate that we go through these cyclical cycles. You'd always like to say we're going on a steady path, we're going up to where we need to be. Um, but, but that's not reality. Um, there's always things beyond your control and my control that impact what we do. So you really need to, you're going to have these cycles unless uh, you're, in, in every town has this. It's, we're not, it's not unique to Farmington. It's, it's every town ha goes through this. Some towns it's much worse than, than Farmington. You're very lucky that you have a, a um, I was going to say a finance director, but um, <laughs> uh, you're lucky you have a for that. You're lucky you have a fun balance, um, and you have a good tax base to to get through. But everything is always a step up. It, it's you you can't recapture everything all at once, and you can't replenish everything all at once. And it's it, it's a time thing. Um, so, uh, in, in the count, I've been very fortunate working with the councils here because. Uh, the councils have been very supportive of the fund balance policy and, and, and honoring it. You know, I, I have a credit rating agency report where they said that they noted that um, I, you know, they when they looked at this budget and said, you know, you're taking 1.2 million dollars, and I said, yes, we are. I said, but I don't think we're going to use it all. I, and they said that's that'd be great if you don't. And then they said, you know, this is only the second time that we could find in the last 10 years where you've actually used fund balance. And they said that we really think that's great. So I was like, well, okay, you know, but that's that's the support to get from the council, and, the, and you're buying into the philosophy. So, um, so, but again, it's all a step up process. You, you can't, yeah. you know, you can't do everything all at once. And I know you can't predict, but I am thinking about the future, and I'm glad that it's there when we need it. I just see that the opportunity for needing it in the very near future, in the next, you know, maybe possible two years. I'm not yeah, sure, but you, well, if you remember my forecast. You're going to have. You're going to be sitting here a year from now, with the same decisions yeah. to make. Um, That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know. So you're going to. You're going to be sitting here looking at. You know, looking at a six percent tax increase again next year, mm -hmm. because you're going to have debt coming on. The, the debt that we're doing this summer is going to come on next next a uh, year from this August. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're going to have. You're going to be sitting here next year trying to make the same these same decisions. 
Low key and, and you're probably going to tap fund balance again. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, it's it's really you know in reality. And it's the cycle. I'll, I'll tell you a secret. Um, I, and I'm not sure many people catch this, but this budget actually tells you what's going to happen at the end of what I think is going to happen at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. And this budget, if I'm right, um, and and I'm. Don't know if I'm going to be right at this point. I'm not as confident today as I was when I did this. Um, um, you know, this says you're not going to use the, this budget says you're not going to use the this budget forecast or, or that shows up on the second page of this revenue forecast um, says you're not going to use that 1.2 million dollars this year. It says you have enough other revenue coming in that you you won't need this 1.2 million dollars this year. So you actually. You know, I, I'm, I'll, I'll give it away to you. You could use this $1.2 million again next year. Well, if we need to, we'd be very fortunate. And just one quick follow-up on that bond issue that we were talking about. You sorry. see, you might be adding on. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no, 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 no. It was something no, else. No, I'm sorry, Brian. I was, it, it was a side conversation. Sorry. <laughs> That's on me. I got yelled at for this in school all the time. This is your time. Do you want to share with the rest of no, the class? No, 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 no. Don't make me read my note, please. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That, no, no worries. <laughs> but my question was, uh, you said that we're looking at possibly purchasing the, some property. Well, you guys are yeah. looking at the possibility. I, yeah. I, I didn't know anything about it until... It's enough. I didn't know anything about it until I read the agenda and saw $600,000 and said, geez, nobody told me about that. <laughs> like I said, we got it on sale. <laughs> yeah, we did. 50, yeah, 50 grand did on. Do we need to take on additional debt, or do, did we have the money for that? No, that will... You have the authorization. You have a 700... You have like seven hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Back in twenty fourteen, the town council did a, a, a bond, a debt authorization for about four million dollars, and um, you have about seven hundred and fifteen thousand of that left at this point that has not been issued, that has not been ah. spent. So, assuming you do buy this piece of property for six hundred thousand um, dollars, that will get paid from through bonding. We gotcha. will bond that six hundred thousand, and then you'll be down to one hundred and fourteen thousand, and then. Hopefully, you know, if you don't find, Kathy doesn't find any more sale properties. <laughs> no, thank you for clarifying. I was just curious. I appreciate that. Thank you. Keith? No, no, I'm Thanks good. Set. I'm good. <laughs> thank you. Let's TA this. TA pages with no numbers here at the beginning. The summary. Uh, yeah, Revenue the, summary. Uh, Revenue make summary. a motion to uh, temporarily... Uh, what am I saying? TA the Temporarily Revenue approved. Summaries. I got this cookie problem now, too. This thing's a bit... <laughs> Temporarily uh, approve uh, the general fund revenue and uh, general fund appropriations pages in our book. Second. Motion second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 No, every motion carries. <coughs> Capital, right? Whew. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess you're back. Now you're, yeah. we start over again where you want to go. Right. So we've gone through everything in the budget. Yes. And so now... Um, one of the things, Joey, you had mentioned to me yesterday and uh, was that you felt that there was a chance that we'd probably have to reduce my capital budget recommendation of 2.88%, and you had asked me to uh, make uh, reductions to have that number be at 2,200,000, with half of it going to the school system and half of it going to the municipal operation. Right. Um, and I did, had an opportunity to speak to the superintendent, um, and as you remember yesterday, you guys spoke to them about that they knew there would be reductions in the, the capital. Would you want me to go through what those reductions would be? So to Please. get down to 2200, it would be $1,100,000 on the town side for the capital. So I can just kind of just quickly go through what the thoughts were. And one of the things that LOSIP, which is a state grant, they've changed some of their recently, right? Just It just happened the, about changing the, maybe you can right. just explain that, Joe. There's a grant program called LOSIP. It's a local capital improvement program. It's a state grant program. I'll make this real quick because I keep starting to get glassy. Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm taking, I speak out of turn one time and I'm taking shot. I just complimented you 10 minutes ago, Joe. Come on. Um, and what the program is, it's to support town's capital projects. And um, the way the program ran prior to this year was you had to identify capital projects, you had to spend the money, then you apply for reimbursement. You apply for the project, and then you apply for reimbursement. In 2023, the state legislature changed the program, and they're going to give us the money, uh, or give all the towns 
their allocation up front and you get to spend it. The catch is that you have to identify by September of this year, I have to identify what projects you're going to spend it on. So, and we're going to get $220,000. The types of capital projects, it's kind of narrow um, and it has a lot of conditions on it. So, unfortunately, it doesn't go with equipment, so you can't apply it to like lawn mowers or dump trucks or anything like that. Um, so, basically, um, you, you have to identify it's usually building improvements, land acquisition, things of that nature. Technology. The technology is a big one. Police, uh, police and public safety are a very big one. As a matter of fact, in the current year's budget, we used $150,000 of low SIP money to do the radios for the police department and the radios for the fire department. So keeping that vein. Okay, so to get to $1,100,000, I would need to reduce $340,000 out of the budget you see here in the book. But we have $220,000 of low SIP funds. So some of these are going to make reductions out of the general fund, but they're going to turn to O's, which is the low SIP funds, other funds. So the first one was um, $83,000 for the highway and grounds mower. And if um, so, that would be minus $83,000. Uh, the next one, my recommendation would be $37,000 in the town manager town hall improvements. Um, the number that we have now is 125. 125, so we take 37,000 out of that. And that's a banking account and also account to have for um, an architect and some different things for um, when we renovate this building. Um, the next thing would be minus $45,000 in town manager technology, but that would be, that would turn to an O, correct? Yep, right. so the, some of the projects that were funded under that, uh, council chamber technology upgrades and server infrastructure, uh, would equaling that 45,000 would turn into a, an O. So it's really, in, for all practical purposes, it's not really a reduction because it's just turning to an O. Uh, minus $75,000 for police technology. Um, that would be the security um, camera repl uh, replacement, and that would turn into an O. So we just make that an O. And $100,000 for fire and rescue communication upgrades, and the, that would turn into an O. So again, we had to cut out $340,000, but we had 220 dollars that we could use for low SIP money. So the, really, the reduction was $340 minus $220, and that was $83,000 for the grounds mower and $37,000 for the town hall improvements. So that's like the actual real reductions. Does that? Did that make sense? Yes. Okay. So then my, that town's part of the capital would be $1,100,000. And then the board, we talk, spoke to the board, and I'm, theirs, if you remember, I'm just going to, their section would be $1,100,000, and they said they would be, their technology and infrastructure would be $300,000. School security would be $170,000. School code and safety would be $150,000. And elementary K4H VAC would be $480,000. So that would be their four projects, and that equals $1,100,000. Again, for a number on here, your tax and budget worksheet would change from $2,800,000 to $2,200,000. And you had a conversation with the superintendent, obviously, the, where this was the was list that they gave us. Yeah, but where she was more important to where, what what fund she wanted. Yeah, fund if she wanted more in in her non capital and her in right her exactly. So that would be my recommendations for the capital budget to bring the capital budget down to two million two hundred thousand dollars. Could you just run through those again one more time? Sure, you could. I will. Uh, it would be technology infrastructure would be three hundred thousand dollars. Right. Uh, school security would be one hundred and seventy thousand mm -hmm. dollars. School code and safety one hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And elementary K four HVAC four hundred and eighty thousand dollars. So the things they're giving up are cafeteria equipment, district MEP, structural architectural, Irving A. Robbins general. And, and the and the roof at Westwoods. No, the roof is bonded. bonded. Oh, that's bonded. That's yeah. right. I'm sorry. That was bonded. That sounds correct to me. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Pat, you have a question? No. Brian? I'm good. Thank you. Sarah? No. no Keith? Not in this. Amy? No. Anything else, Dave? No. I'm good. Okay. So, so now, basically, we are... Um, oh, I did have one thing. The, the grant... I'm sorry. Yeah, I, no I, problem. I, I, the grant, the, this new O... Yeah. I think that so you have to apply for that in the fall, September. Is that or you know? No. What they're going to give us the money. Um, basically, in June, they're going to send us a, ch a check for two hundred twenty thousand dollars. By September, you have to uh, tell them. I have to tell them, or we have to tell them how we're going to spend that money. Okay. So we have to give them a list of the projects that that money will be um, allotted to. Okay. Thank you. All right, so in lieu of all the information that we have, um, I could see us going forward in this direction if everybody wants to hear my quick proposal here. Um, given the conversation with the Board of Ed last night, I would propose their budget percentage to be at 4.75, which is what the superintendent said they could get to while not affecting um, services or needing to reduce staff. Um, I would keep the town at 2.8 as listed with the exception of I uh, would put in to try to put seasonal two seasonal employees in or whatever they need to put in a seasonal employee each um, for the police and the and the grounds department what would be the dollar amount so would that be something like 30,000 15 15 for each yeah so that would be probably two two seasonals in uh, each department, yep. about two in each Roughly. one. So there'd be two, sorry, yeah. I misunderstood yeah. what we were talking about before yeah. then. Yep. Uh, more the better. Um, uh, debt service I would not touch. Um, capital I would keep as proposed with the exception of uh, if we could add in 83,000 for that mower uh, that Russ had spoken about. Um, you know, I made the joke that I'm pro mower. I, I really am. I think <laughs> that the, you know, it's. I think it's important to note that Public Works was not a flat schedule or flat, flat budget, and it wasn't, uh, you know, it, it wasn't even a modest increase. Public Works went down, um, and so it, it. I think Russ does a good job hiding it, but I, I, you know, because they do such a good job with their equipment. But I do think that they are desperate for some new equipment. We have a golf course in town. Um, I think moving stuff around like that is incredibly, you know, inconvenient. That mower, I think he said, was from the '90s or was it 2001? But it's incredibly old. So if we can add that, um, as Joe mentioned. The board stressed that they, if they were to get additional funds above where we had initially targeted, that it was more important for their operational budgets. I think this capital addition would be good for them. Um, and then the only other change I would make to our first page would be going off of what Joe said about fund balance. I would move our contribution from this year from fund balance from 850 to 1.2. Um, if we are getting, is that? Yeah, no. Nope. So if we're getting to the end of this year and we're, you know, knock on wood, not going to touch that, um, you know, the hope would be that we're not, you know, affecting any of our credit ratings that we said it's all important for us to, to keep track of. Um, you know, it's not an additional 1.2, it's an additional 3,350,000. Um, and so I don't know where those numbers bring us on the maybe town side of the budget, but... And so maybe if we give Joe a minute, he can probably do it and then put it on the screen for us. We yeah, can okay. do a new tax and budget worksheet. We can look at that, see where that brings you. While Joe's doing that, does anybody have a question? Yeah, so that was um, upping the 850 to 1.2. Okay. Mm -hmm. It really came off of Joe's comments that yeah. 1.2. <laughs> I mean... Well, if we, we allocated it last year and if right. we're not going to use it... we're not going to use it, it makes it complete sense. I mean, yeah. so... Mm -hmm. um, sorry, anybody else question? Patty? No questions right now. Okay, Sarah? Thanks. No, at the moment, no. Amy? No. All right, go ahead, Keith. I don't know, I mean, the only other thing I was going to say, I mean, I'm piggybacking on my own uh, oh, statement, but... I'll, I'll, I'll piggyback. Yeah, go ahead, piggyback. Again, when, when I sat down with uh, uh, the Board of Ed Chair, Mr. Becker, and the Superintendent, and we discussed everything that was the best for them, again, they stressed that, you know, operating was very very important to them in order to you know keep the teachers on staff to maintain the services that they were giving and they would be able to you know obviously be okay with the reduction in their capital projects so 
and again, we, you know, we first start off with a 3.2 with a 2.8 to the town. So obviously we're, we're jumping up to a 475 for that 3.2 and understanding the needs of the town that, you know, we can't just keep decimating and decimating them that we should try to this. Again, it takes us a little bit of an opportunity to fund something and push the line a little ahead because we have the opportunity this year knowing that next year it's going to be a, a bigger stress on us and the town in order to find common ground that makes operation smooth and doesn't overburden everybody. I think it's also for like us as a council, you know, I know that there's always the ask, but you know, it does show a big commitment to the, to the board of it as well. I mean, it's the biggest percentage increase in their budget since uh, 2011, 2012. You know, I think it shows that we're serious about doing as much as we can for both the municipal and the board of education side. Um, I think Joe's uh, ready with the numbers. I see how it comes out on the screen. Can we see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, um, no. Blow no. It up. It's a little difficult. Um, Is there any way to put them on the monitors? Can you go to your, I'm going to print this out in your office. Oh, sure. Oh, thank you. I need those, mm -hmm. those technology improvements he was talking about for like? council chambers. He knows his things. You got a printer? I don't know. <laughs> you just hit it. And it would lower. Do you just want to take a couple minute break? Yeah. yeah. We'll take a couple minutes. All right. We'll just take a five minute break while we get those papers printed up. No, 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 no. 15, 15. It's 15 for the PD, 15 for. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Try to blow it up a little bit on the uh, screen. Yeah, that looks a little better. Oh, you got the paper well, coming to you. you yeah. the I know. In front of you also. Um, just to go th go through it, you wanted the board at a 4.75, so their budget would be 79 million 544 It's a reduction of two of 924,755 dollars. Uh, the two 15,000 dollars for the seasonal help would add 30,000 to the town budget. So the town budget would go to 2.89 percent uh, from the 28. Debt stays the same. Uh, if I get the capital right, which I think I did. Um, we're going down to 2-2, two, two, but then we're going back up for the mower, so that net, it becomes $2,283,000. That's a reduction of 597 to the contribution, not necessarily to the capital budget, but to the contribution. Um, so that's, that becomes 2 million two eighty three. That's with the mower in there. Bottom line is that the Budget would then become 128 million 1665. It's a six percent budget increase. I'm going to skip over the um, grand list on the revenues on the fund balance. You're increasing the fund balance uh, up to 1.2 million dollars, so it'd be the same as this year, which brings the total revenues to non-tax revenues to 15 million 185 So. What ends up happening is your, your mill rate becomes 25.45 mills. It's a 1.24 mill increase. Five, it's a 5.13 percent uh, tax increase, or a 375 on the average home. That's what it would look like. Any questions on those numbers? Patty, you still with us? Yeah, I'm here. Gotcha. You're all set with any questions? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Brian? I'm good. Sarah? I'm good. Keith? No questions. Amy? I'm good. And Dave? Just a couple items. One item is, I know on the Board of Ed, because we weren't in the discussion that you had with the Board of Ed, but I know last night's presentation, they talked about the reserves. Are they using some of that reserve? Yes. I mean, has that been? Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's, that's the, kind of that's been, my understanding. That's the understanding? Yeah. Based on what they said last night, it sounds like they would use 500,000 Right. the reserve. Right. And then. Yeah. 
Yep. Um, that, that was the one question. Okay. Okay. So I think if we're good there, I think we should start with our motions and start moving things along. All right. Uh, start with these two this is to add to the highway and this is to add to the thing okay so we'll make those two and then I'll help you with the rest of them we'll gotcha go it's better than my uh, yeah. scratched and stuff over yeah. here mm -mm. okay I'd like to make a motion to add $15,000 to the highway uh, highway and grounds operations seasonal account second got a motion to second discussion all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. opposed Motion passes. Make a motion to add $15,000 to the police patrol seasonal account. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. I make, go ahead. Yeah, so now you're gonna, now you're gonna make a bunch of individual motions. I make a motion to set the Board of Education budget for fiscal year 2024-2025 at $79,544,240, an increase of Three million six hundred and seven thousand eighteen dollars or four point seven five percent over the current year budget. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Yeah, Joe, if I could just say um, I, I appreciate all the work that's gone into um, make as um, Keith pointed out earlier in the discussion um, at making sure that we are funding our schools and providing them with the operating funds that they need. And I understand from my own conversations with the chair of the board that this is definitely something that the board supports and can work with. So I, um, so I just want us, because I know we've gotten a lot of messages in the past few days about funding the board at its full amount. So I just want to say that I have assurances that this is, that this works for them. Thank you. Anybody else with a discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion Aye. passes. Make a motion to set the town operating budget for fiscal year 2024-2025 at $35,021,657, an increase of $982,389, or 2.89% over the current year budget. Second. Motion is second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. I make a motion to set the debt service budget for fiscal year 2024-2025 at $11,426,268, an increase of $1,461,525 or 14.67% over the current year budget. Second. Motion is second, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. Make a motion to change the funding source of the capital improvement plan, fire and rescue services, communication upgrades account from 100,000 from the general fund to 100,000 in other funding, LOCIP state funding. Mm -hmm. Second. Oh, second, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> motion is second, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. I make a motion to reduce the capital improvement plan police technology improvements account by $75,000. Second. Motion is second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. I make a motion to add a new project security camera replacement in the capital improvement plan police, uh, sorry, capital improvement plan police in the amount of $75,000 to be funded by other funds, LOCIP state grant. Second. Motion is second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Make a motion to reduce the town manager technology improvements account by $45,000. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Make a motion to add new project technology upgrades and service replacement in the capital improvement plan town manager in the amount of $45,000 to be funded by other funds. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. 
Make a motion to reduce the town manager town hall improvements account by 30, 37,000. Second. Motion is second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Make a motion to set the Board of Education's capital budget as follows for a total of uh, $1,100,000. Technology infrastructure, $300,000. School security, $170,000. School code and safety, $150,000. Elementary K-4 HVAC, $480,000. Second. And a motion to second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. I make a motion to set the capital improvement budget for fiscal year 2024-2025 at $2,283,000 and an increase of $1,283,000 or 128.3% uh, over the current budget year. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Make a motion, mo make a motion to set the fiscal year 2024-2025 BOE defined contribution budget at 326,000, an increase of 1,000 or 0.31% uh, over the current budget year. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Make a motion to increase the appropriation from fund balance by 350,000. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay. This last one's a long one with a lot of numbers, so bear with me. Uh, I make a motion to set the Town of Farmington fiscal year budget for the Board of Education at $79,544,240 or a 4.75 increase above fiscal year 2023-2024 budget and the town operating budget at $35,021,657 or a 2.89 increase over the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget and the debt service budget at $11,426,268 or a 14.67 increase above fiscal year 2023-2024 budget and the capital improvement budget at uh, $2,283,000 uh, or an increase or, or two, 128.3 percent increase above fiscal year 2023-2024 budget and the BOE defined contribution budget at 326,000 or a 0.31 percent increase above fiscal year 2023-2024 resulting in a total appropriation for fiscal year 2024-2025 of $128,601,165 uh, a 6.05% increase over fiscal year 2023-2024 budget. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Last one. Uh, I make a motion to approve the warning of the April 15th, 2024 mm -hmm. annual town meeting and the April 25th, 2024 referendum. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All right. Wait, wait. Let's, no. let's talk about that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the discussion this part. More mm -hmm. boom, boom, boom. Have it, and that's the uh, thing that I saw. Okay. Kathy, I think you might have stolen one of mine, so oh, okay. you could probably throw it out. It's just got a chicken scratch on it. So. More eating. This one? That's uh, it. Could be. So what we're doing here is our bonding questions um, and the warning you guys have to sign this before we leave today so basically what we're doing is that the questions are going to be the first question is going to be shall the budget so we have to, we talked about just did that then the next one the question number two is that shall the town of Farmington appropriate two million three hundred eighty five thousand for the replacement of the roof at Westwood's upper elementary school so that's the second question. The third question will be, shall the town of Farmington appropriate $2,750,000 for the replacement of the HVAC systems and the roof at the police facility? That would be that. The fourth question would be, shall the town of Farmington appropriate $1.4 million for the acquisition of a new engine eight fire, engine pumper and engine pumper? And then the fifth question would be, shall the town of Farmington appropriate 1.75 for the acquisition of a Quint fire truck? So the fire trucks are 
a separate separate, separate questions. And so um, those would be, and then a lot of the legalese. So that, that's what you're voting for right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, just to clarify, you're not voting for those. Um, you still have to vote for those. You'll do that at your April 1st meeting. What you're voting for is to approve the warning that will be published in the newspaper Average, announcing to the citizens and eligible voters of the town that this that these topics will be brought up at the annual town meeting and will be sent to referendum. So, Thank so, you. so if anybody has any trepidation about any of those projects and doesn't want to vote for them, you're not voting for them tonight. You, you'll get that opportunity on April first. Right, and at the ballot. And at the ballot. Yeah. <laughs> any questions? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. All right. I think we're done. We're done? I, I think we're done. All right. So Saturday, we just got in. We're just hanging out. Yeah, yeah, Saturday, we're just having breakfast. Nice. No, no Saturday. We're canceled. Saturday's canceled. Saturday's canceled. <laughs> Monday and Tuesday are right. canceled. So we're done. Yep. And then, just so everyone understands the process, April 1st, this is now going to be called. The town council's, uh, the town council's proposed, proposed, right, proposed. Now, right. Basically, what it says on here is proposed budget. You are now in your proposed budget stage. You're on the proposed, and if you and it's, when it's approved on April 1st, it becomes your recommended budget. But right now, April 1st, we'll have a public hearing on the town council's proposed. When do we budget. go into blackout? That we can't. When you send it to referendum on April 1st. First. Okay. And April 1st is a Monday, not yeah. a normal Tuesday. Yep. So we'll have that. We'll have a public hearing, and typically the the chair will do a, a little intro. We'll go through the in detail, and then the superintendent will go through her new budget, and probably the chairperson too. And then we'll have the public hearing on that, and then it gets sent to um, the annual town meeting. Got it. Okay. So again, I want to echo, echo what Patty said. Okay. Um, the superintendent was good with this number. And it was a pleasure to obviously work with everybody here on the dais with this today, the superintendent and the board of ed to uh, come to these numbers for our town. So at that, we'll call for an adjournment. Keith. Make a motion to adjourn the March 14th town council budget meeting. Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Good night, everybody, and thank you very much.